the coaches. Well, Colorado certainly wants to see how the first half goes, and if they're going to have the win to start out in the third quarter would, would be their advantage. Ryan Nunez and Lyndon Harry back to receive the kick, and it is a high one. And it's going to be Nunez at about the three. He has some running room, crosses the 20 up to the 24-yard line, and that is where Colorado will begin their first possession under the leadership of the Big 12 leading passer, Coy Detmer. Interesting. Believe it or not, a lot of people feel that Detmer has had a lot of starts for Colorado, and Coach is telling us last night, see, this is only his 12th start as the Buffalo quarterback. Well, he is, in terms of his experience level, he's uh, relatively young, but such a talented quarterback in all the things that he does, his leadership, his presence on the field, his vision, he makes smart reads, he's just an intelligent on-the-field player. One lone setback, and Herschel Troutman goes in motion. Two tight end, customary set up. Colorado strips their first ten plays. They go up in the air to Troutman, and it's almost intercepted. Tony Blevins coming over from that free safety spot to knock it away from Troutman. Kansas is not going to get a whole lot of chances to pick off a pass. Here on the first play of the ball game, Tony Blevins has an opportunity to make a play. And he just didn't put it away, but all of a sudden he had an opportunity to. Interesting Colorado going right to the air. Number one in pass efficiency in the conference is Coy Detmer, eighth in the NCAA. And the Kansas defense is there to stack up Herschel Troutman, Patrick Brown, and Brett McGraw. McGraw from that no tackle position coming up. Let's take a look at Colorado's offense, and boy, I say what, James Kidd is a good one. He is playing the best of all those fleet-footed wide receivers, Steve. Well, all their receivers are, as we saw earlier, have tremendous speed, and that's going to stretch the field, make the field bigger, and if you're a cornerback or safety for Kansas, you've got more responsibility because of that speed to get downfield. Well, Tennyson McCarty, the tight end, is in the lineup for Colorado. Third down and 13. Detmer goes into the flat. They have the first down, pushed back away from the first down, but Detmer getting Ray Carruth, who was covered by Tony Blevins, showing the strength of his arm, able to throw from one hash mark all the way over to the far side of the football field. Kansas has a, Kansas has a good defensive football team overall. They, they really have played reasonably well throughout the season, but they've just not been consistent. There's the uh, defensive uh, front, uh, uh, left side linebackers. Ronnie Ward is the most the leading tackler and the key guy of that group. And then Jason Harris in the secondary is a really top player. That pickup was about 13 on the play. This time Chris Anderson getting tied up and just couldn't get free. Anderson, the interesting story, the 6'4 junior out of LaPorte, Texas. Here is a guy that has the size, Steve, to be a tight end, but he does not want to play tight end, even though the coaches would like to see him in that position. He is talking to Rick Neuheisel on the side. Rick Neuheisel, the third youngest coach in the NCAA behind John Blake of Oklahoma and Ron Cooper down in Louisville. Second and 10, ball on the 35, scoreless here in Lawrence, Kansas. Troutman, no place to go, maybe picks up a foot on the play. Adrian Green, the 6'3", 290-pound sophomore out of Florida on the stop. Kansas coming into the ball game really felt like if they could stop the run and force them into a predictable passing situation, that gives them some benefits that uh, otherwise if they're able to dominate or carry the run through the ball game, it would cause problems for Kansas. So they want to try to stop that run. Bill Savoy flanked wide to the right. Detmer looks over the middle, pass is complete. Another first down for the Buffs. They are so difficult to cover, and when you consider that Kansas' defensive back, there's not one in the starting lineup over 5'10". It shows how much they have to handle today. The benefit of speed is that you really can't play tough cover because you'll get lost. It just really forces the defender to play back on you because you're afraid he's going to get the deep ball. You can't give up the big play. So there he does a good job, chops his feet, and then that little cushion, Coy Detmer, when the defender falls back maybe two or three yards just a step, Detmer's there with the football. That's the dynamics of Colorado's offense. Anderson picks up 14 out of the play. This time, Detmer rolls out, right, throws left, passes incomplete. Should have been caught, intended for Ray Carruth. Jason Harris getting the hand in there to knock it away. 
That's one thing Rick Neuhauser was talking to us about last night, the fact that he would like Coy Detmer to work on his footwork a little more. He says, yes, he can complete the pass when he's rolling right and trying to throw left, but he'd still rather have him concentrate a little bit more on that footwork. Sometimes you watch him on video, and he just will not set his feet, and he throws kind of an air ball. That was an air ball, and it was certainly catchable, but not that solid throw that makes the receiver catch it and run with it. On second and ten. Able to pick up about three on the play. And Glenn Mason, who when he came to Kansas, had only 50 scholarship players. Last year, of course, the win over Colorado vaulted them to a 10-win season. He had a tremendous effort last year from his football team. This is his 25th year in coaching for the 46-year-old. Turned down the Georgia job, accepted it, then decided he wanted to stay here in Lawrence, and he said he can look himself in the mirror about that. It was the correct decision. Third and six. Colorado a perfect two of two on third down so far. Pass is complete to Brody Hefner, the tight end, dragging defenders with him. And the redshirt freshman gets inside the 25. Maurice Gaddy got the free ride on Hefner. Brody Hefner is more of the pass situation tied in. There he is. He breaks. He looks inside and then cuts it out. And then Mo Gaddy's got to try to make a play on him. He's the more fluid runner of the tight ends and receivers. And here's Coy Detmer reacting to the pass thrown. A well-thrown ball. Gaddy giving away about eight inches to Hefner on that play. As Troutman, again, hitting the right side. Goes down about the 20-yard line before Ronnie Ward, the leading tackler on this Jayhawk defense, makes the stop. Kansas co defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz, 10 years at Colorado, 7 as defensive coordinator, now over here at Kansas. There's Mike on the sideline, and he knows just how important this and potent this Buffalo offense can be. He made a comment yesterday, that could be good and bad. That's right. <laughs> on second and seven, the Buffs keep it on the ground with Troutman again. This time Ward trips him up after a pickup of about three on the play. We played just about four minutes, and Colorado on this opening drive has looked very impressive, especially on third down completions. They had a couple of 14-yard pickups, a 23-yard pickup. Detmer already with 51 yards throwing the football this afternoon. Third and five for the Buffs. Carruth in the slot. Detmer, a little touch pass right over the middle to Carruth. He's got the first down and then some. Inside the five, down to about the three-yard line. Ronnie Ward, the right linebacker, cannot cover Ray Carruth with that speed. When they put Carruth inside in the slot, this is what they do. The, the, any defender, he's got a man coverage. He just gives him too much cushion. Afraid he's going to take him deep. He comes across the middle. Coy Detmer, it's just uh, right now, it's a turkey shoot. Troutman drives the right side, and this time the Jayhawk defense stands tall. No gain on the play. 10-15 left to play in the first. Jason Ford from the linebacker spot on the stop. Brings down a second down and goal from the three. Troy Detmer, a Heisman candidate, Unitas, O'Brien candidate, coming off that torn ACL last year and when he was leading the nation in pass efficiency again. Really has recuperated. He had a friend in Dalton Simmons, the defensive back, also for Colorado. He, too, had the ACL, missed all of last year, and the two spent a great deal of time trying to recuperate, building up their strength together. Second and three. Time the eye formation. Darren Fisk is the fullback. Mainly used as a blocker. This time Detmer rolls out. Throws right in the middle. Touchdown, Colorado. Desmond Harris, or Dem Desmond Dennis with his first touchdown reception of 1996. time we saw how effective Coy Detmer is with a little play action. Dennis wide open right in the middle of the field. 
Jason Leslie, the barefooted kicker, on to attempt the extra point. He's had a couple blocks this year. And it is good. 9.44 left to play in the first quarter. A very impressive drive for Colorado, especially on third down situations. They lead 7-0. Big 12 football will return after these local messages. in the first quarter, courtesy of Desmond Dennis, a 6'3 junior out of Oxon Hills, Maryland. Here's the touchdown. At goal line, you really want to protect the perimeter, so the play-action pass, Desmond's coming from the right, the tight end, Desmond Dennis, the tight end, number 89, perfectly thrown. Again, Coy Detmer doesn't look all that pretty, planting his feet, driving the ball, but puts it in for the touchdown. Well-executed drive, and they just manage Kansas all the way down the field. Coy Detmer, quite the cheerleader. Now Des Desmond Dennis with an ice pack on that left knee. Pretty impressive scoring drive, though, Steve. 14 plays, 76 yards, just over five yards. I think what's impressive about that, the third down conversions of Colorado. Jason Leslie set to kick it off. Kansas has already won, run one back this year. It is a short kick going against that strong wind. Kansas is going to start out with great field position. Jude Henley crossing the 25 up to about the 27-yard line, and that is where Matt Jotter will get things underway. Jotter, a career-high 268 yards, throwing the ball last week against Texas Tech. Well, as we said in, in our pregame, you cannot put Matt Jotter in a position where he has to win the ball game. Everyone's got to contribute. Receivers, the offensive line's got to do their job. They've had some problems in consistency in that front line with two young players, Cleve Robertson and Justin Gaston. Gaslow, they've got to play big. Kansas' first offensive play. They keep it on the ground, and Hugh Henley finds some running room. Crosses the 30 up to about 33-yard line, and Steve Isaac Bird, we talked about him earlier, he is a good one. Well, really an NFL prospect, not as speedy as the uh, Colorado receivers, but excellent in terms of being able to catch the ball and, and make an impact. The offensive line, Scott Whitaker, has been the most consistent of that group, and there are Cleve Roberts and Justin Glasgow on the first play that really did a great job of blocking. And that is so important for this Kansas offense to establish the run. Glenn Mason kept reiterating it a number of times yesterday with it. Henley around the right side, able to get close to the first down before Marcus Washington trips him up on the play. And the defense for the Buffaloes of Colorado. Well, Greg Jones has consistently been a performer for Colorado. That's a, a very fine offensive um, defensive front. Matt Russell is uh, the person that gets a lot of press. With all three of those uh, linebackers are exceptional. And Steve Roska has uh, consistently been the big play performer. 14 tackles last week. He makes all the calls in the secondary. Colorado defensive secondary, a little shaky. They only have six defensive backs making the trip. So Roska and company can ill afford to get hurt in this ballgame. That was good enough for the first down with 8.51. Kansas with the ball, first and 10. Ball sitting on their own 37-yard line. Thank you. 
Henley and Galbraith in the backfield. Play action, Johnner, the pocket collapses, and he is sacked for the 11th time this year. That is the 16th Colorado sack of 1996, and Ryan Olson, who leads the team in that category, picks up his number five and a half sack. Colorado likes to blitz and put pressure on you, and so the real that was one of the concerns of the offensive coordinator, Pat Rule, for Kansas. They start out fine, but it just quickly collapses from the outside when you've got pressure coming. That's the way to close the pack, the package around uh, Matt Johnner. That brings up a second and 17, and this is exactly what the Kansas coaches had hoped wouldn't happen. Second and long. And Johnner is going to call it from the shotgun formation. He doesn't like what he sees, so he's going to call a timeout. Kansas burning a timeout early here in the first quarter with 7.54. As they trail in the ballgame, 7-0. We'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper, proud sponsor of the Big 12 championship game. Yeah, good, good idea, because then we'll talk about how he said, you know, Steve was talking, it's got to be a team effort again, they've got to believe. Anything they're doing, Steve? Yeah. Uh. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Well, you know, we were 4-0 and we went into Boulder. Yep. seven we're still in the first quarter they would like nothing better than to have happen what happened last year in boulder they were a 24 point underdog but glenn mason and company pulled off a big upset well you know we were four and oh we went into boulder uh, but we really hadn't played very solid football we played a good game against tcu on a nationally televised game and other than that we really struggled against cincinnati uh, north texas and should have got beat the week before against the university of houston and then we came out, and uh, to be quite honest with you, we, we played better than, uh, uh, than anybody had expected. And uh, that win brought us together as a team. You could feel it. You could uh, smell it in the locker room after the game that, uh, that that team believed that they were a team. And if they played together and kept the uh, right attitude, that there was anybody we couldn't play with. Johnner's pass off to the far side of John Gordon, the true freshman. He is knocked out of bounds at the original line of scrimmage. And picking up on Glenn Mason said, talking to some of the players yesterday, Steve, they all said when we were going on that plane to Boulder, we believed we were going to win that football game. They had the confidence that they were going to beat the number four team in the country. I have a sense that there is some, maybe a little reluctancy to have everybody believe that this year. Uh, you know, and he said, made the comment that they hadn't played consistently last year. They struggled with their consistency this year, but I, I, I agree with you. They've not had that killer instinct, but I think they're confident with a good game plan going in. They've got to perform now. Big third down play, third and nine. Johnner is forced to scramble, and he is going to be close Johnner to the first down, but I think he is going to be short. When you're plus six on a third down situation, if you're an offense, the Colorado defense is extremely tough. Only seven teams out of 46 chances have come up with a third down conversion when it was plus six. Here, Colorado's manned up against Kansas. That's what Matt Johnner saw. Everybody's got a man, and then so all of a sudden he realizes, I've got to go find something and make something happen. He's got to put it under his arm and run with it. Dean Royal set to kick it away. He's averaging just a shade under 40 yards a kick, and it's a high short one, and he's going with the win. Colorado's going to have some pretty good field position considering what it could have been, and it is downed at about the 24-yard line. 
So Royal didn't get the foot into that one. Only a 26-yard punt with the win, and Rick Neuheisel and company now take over, leading 7-0. This Colorado team is a team that has won at least eight games the last eight seasons. And Rick Neuheisel knows what this Kansas team can do, considering what happened last year. Oh, I think kids always remember those kind of things. Certainly, uh, we were riding high at the time. We were ranked number four in the country, having just beaten A&M in Oklahoma. I think our emotion uh, meter was kind of tapped out. We didn't play with great emotion, but that is not to take away from the great Kansas effort that day. Uh, but our kids remember that, and hopefully we'll play inspired football. And so far they are. Last night, Rick Neuheisel wanted to know if it was going to snow today, Steve. <laughs> I think he was kind of hoping for it. Rick Neuheisel is just 35 years of age, went to UCLA as a walk-on, ended up being the MVP of the Rose Bowl. He says, I've been through it all. I've heard the boos, I've heard the cheers. He said, people sometimes say I was a great quarterback at UCLA. He said, listen, I was just average. I just got caught up in a magical season. Two tight ends, Detmer's throw is off the mark intended for Ray Carew. Just off his fingertips, he was covered by Jason Harris. Carew, 25 receptions already this year. Here, Kansas is manned up again. Ty, Toy Detmer just really has, it has a tendency, when you look at the videos, I've seen several times where he'll throw the ball behind. He's trying to force it, get it there so quickly that at times he'll drop it back. I don't know if the wind's bothering him or not, but that time he threw a poor pass. A third and eight. Colorado has been very successful in this situation. Lost it up against the wind and just a little bit too far for James Kidd to come underneath it. Detmer throws a very catchable ball, but this time not enough air underneath the football. There you see all the, the coverage that right here is what, what you're going to see. Man coverage by Kansas. Watch them as they react, trying to go to James Kidd. Good pressure by that defensive front. Good pressure by everybody. The ball thrown up. The, the wind may factor on those higher throws because it does get uh, kind of dicey because it is a strong wind right in uh, Coy Detmer's face. Nick Beach set to kick it away. Isaac Bird with that 94-yarder return against OU. This one goes absolutely nowhere. And this has been a problem for Colorado is punting the football. This time, a 34-yard kick in Kansas has good field position. Back right after this word from Sitco. Look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 country. Sitco says go. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, that's okay. Sitco people just uh, got off on that. I'll tell you what, see, that was one ugly punt. Yes. The wind definitely affected yeah. it. Yeah. Are you coming out to that shot, Kenny? Okay. You want to talk about their offensive line? You want to talk about Kansas' offensive line? Okay, yeah, go back to Glenn Mason, because I want to talk about it, what he said about his offensive line. Not quite as harsh as he was yesterday, but we'll talk about it. Mason and the Jayhawks trail 7-0 with 6.02 left in the first. Glenn Mason getting some of his coaching knowledge from the great Woody Hayes when he was at Ohio State. And he was really concerned about his offensive line coming into this game. Said they have not played well in the last few games. 
This time the blocking not too bad as the fullback Mark Sanders, the senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida, with only three carries coming into the game. Gets the and what really concerned him was is that they felt like they've got to establish some degree of the run to keep Colorado from just teeing off in a pass situation. So they, that's why the importance of the offensive line to play well. He said he was more harsh than you were, Ron. I was trying he, to clean up a little bit. He, he said they've been consistently poor for two weeks. Again, the fullback carrying the football. This time, a bunch of Buffaloes are going to wrestle him down with Ryan Olson leading the charge. The 6'2 junior out of Lakewood, Colorado, who is probably one of the most explosive players on this Colorado defense. Holds all the weight room records up in Boulder. What's the offensive line? What's Colorado make penetration? You're seeing more white jerseys going past that line of scrimmage than you are blue jerseys going the other direction. They just stand them up. Jared Smith and Cleve Roberts both got beaten on that play. This is the perfect situation for Colorado. Forced the team into a third and long. It is third and seven. Three-step drop. The southpaw lets it go, and it's over the head of this Isaac Bird. Is for Isaac Bird incomplete. So once again, the third down defense of Colorado fourth is down. extremely tough. Kansas now 0 for 2 in third down conversion. Colorado was very concerned about Isaac Bird, number one. Good break by Marcus Washington. Here's a guy that's a very talented sophomore, but he's been inconsistently. The coaches say he needs to focus. He's missed some tackles. That time it was right where he needed to be on Isaac Bird. Dean Royal's first punt went only 32 yards. See if he can do better. Kicking it to Ryan Nunez again. This time he skies one. Nunez fields it at the four. That was dangerous. Trying to get out of the pickle he's got himself in. Gets up to about the 12. A 52-yard kick about a nine-yard return. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper Roundup. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Virginia Spank in North Carolina State. Boston College leading. Michigan on top of Indiana in the second. Penn State and Iowa locked up in a battle. Northwestern and Barry Alvarez going at it. And Georgia at Vanderbilt between the hedges and Athens. We'll keep you posted on scores throughout the country and throughout the day. Denver's first drive was to perfection. Trying to duplicate it again. Troutman, the low setback. And he has the football crossing the 15 up to about the 16-yard line. Ronnie Ward and Brett McGraw are rolling it down. Ward. Offensive coordinator for this Buffalo team is Carl Durrell. Durrell was a wide receiver at UCLA when Rick Neuheisel was the quarterback. In fact, at the Rose Bowl, he threw a couple of touchdown passes to Durrell. Interesting, they made a pack back then. They said, listen, whoever becomes head coach first, you got to bring the other one with him. <laughs> Rick Neuheisel remembered that pledge and has kept to it. Brown again, Troutman dancing around in the backfield, not much room. And ironically, Rick Neuheisel replaced Carl Durrell when Durrell left Colorado in his first sit, went down to Arizona State. And now Rick and his former wide receiver teammate back together again. Third and five, there's Mike Hankwitz, former defensive coordinator at Colorado. left in the first. Two wide receivers to the right. They try to draw. Spinning around, closing in on the 20 is Lyndon Harry, the six-foot junior out of Port Arthur, Texas, but he will be short of the first down. Henry had the big game last week, starting for Herschel Troutman against Oklahoma State when Troutman was suspended. But it wasn't good enough on that effort, and the Bucks are going to be forced to kick it away. This time, Pete standing inside his five-yard line. Isaac Bird set to receive the kick. Only 34 yards on his first punt of the afternoon. Whistle, that's going to be too much time on Colorado, so that's going to back him up even further. And kicking into the wind, Kansas almost assuredly is going to get some type of good field Before position. Snap, dead ball, delay of the game, offense. Now, last year, Colorado set a team record for most penalties. This year, early on, they were the most penalized team in the NCAA. Now they're averaging just about 10 penalties a game, under 100 yards a game. 
but they really only had one game when they had fewer than 11 penalties. That was last week. They only had four. And you can see the penalties that they've had this year. Peach, the snap is a little high, but he comes down with an end-over-end -end kick. Bird's going to return it, but not very far. Bird's going to be dropped on the 40-yard line of Colorado, and that's where Kansas will begin after the 28-yard kick. It has been a frustrating two weeks for June Henley. He was averaging over 200 yards a game coming into the contest against Oklahoma. But both the Sooners and Texas Tech stuffed him the last two weeks. It has been frustrating. Um, it's been, you know, it's been frustrating, but uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, just be, just get down when you know, you know, it's, it's going to come eventually if you just keep working at it. So I mean, it's been tough, you know, hearing all the, seeing all the, the hype at first was, you know, probably and everything. Then the got the, some critics talking this and that. So it's been kind of hard, but I'm, 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 I'm working through it. Now Kansas is going to be penalized as they have a new quarterback in the lineup. It is Ben Roots, the six-foot senior out of Putnam City, Oklahoma, just outside of Oklahoma City. Would you put the game clock to two minutes? Is he asking us to do that, Steve? That's right at us on that. I, I, don't, I don't have that ability. But Ben Roots was slated to be the starting quarterback for this Jayhawk team First going down, into 15, the summer, the, the spring drills, I should say. He originally signed with Nebraska. But then he tore up a leg, and that allowed Matt Johnner to move right in and take over the starting quarterback position. But the coaches told us a couple of weeks ago they would not hesitate to play Roots at any time of a football game. June Henley now, Garrett. Brian Nooner, there is obviously nothing wrong with Matt Johnner, but why the decision to change quarterbacks? Matt Russell. Can't hear Brian. We'll try to get that corrected and get Brian's report on Matt Johnner and see what is exactly going on in that Kansas sideline. Second down and 13 for the Jayhawks. Three step drop. Ruth's pass is on the mark inside the 40 down to the 38 yard line. Eric Van coming out of the backfield to make the reception. Eric Van. Tackled by Davis. And number three, Duke Flipper. 24 to go. Kansas going with the win here in the opening quarter. What Ben Roots gives the University of Kansas is that he's a little bit more mobile. Even not being 100%, he's more mobile than Matt Johnner. He's a hard ball thrower and really a, a spark to the team. They really, as you said, thought he would be the starter come this fall. You see the short pass that they used on that last play. As we have a whistle and a timeout's going to be called, but that short pass is by design for Kansas. They feel that it's going to take some of the pressure off their quarterback. And we have a timeout. 102 left to play in the first quarter. Colorado leading Kansas. 7 0. Now, Brian Nooner, we do know you are down on the sideline. Update us on Matt Johnner and the quarterback situation. Well, Matt Johnner, as you said, is perfectly healthy. They just pulled him out. They think Ben can come in and give him a spark doing a pretty nice job on this uh on this particular drive but this is something glenn mason will do at any time in any game if the offense is not moving under matt johnner he won't hesitate to substitute and that's because matt uh, or ben roots does have some experience and they know that he can lead this team on the field We talk about that Colorado defense, especially on third down. They are extremely tough. You can see that what they have done this year, and the third and six is the big one. Only 15% of the team or 15% of the plays have been successful. Their defensive coordinator, A.J. Kristoff, spent some time with Bill Curry at Georgia Tech, also down in Alabama. He is a good one. He has really turned this defense around. Last year was the first year this defense went to a 4-3. They were a 3-4 defense prior to that. But Kristoff turned it around to the 4-3. It's sort of an attack-the-ball type of situation. They just fly everywhere. 
well in two to prepare because the game of the 90s is more of a pass wide open offense so you've got to be able to have people that can run to the ball and, and defend against the pass on third and eight Root from the shotgun formation lost it up into the end zone and Isaac Bird is going to be tied up as he tried to make the break toward the end zone pretty good defense though by Colorado Corey Elton Davis defending There you see uh, Teray Davis on Isaac Bird, number one. He's on him all the way. It's a man coverage. Just the uh, in the lineup. Really the mirrored down. him all the way down the field. Now Kansas is going to try a field goal. They mark it at the 45, and it'll be a 55-yarder for Jeff McCord. He put a big leg into it, but he hooked it around to the left. It will not be good. So McCord had enough room, just didn't have off the direction the on it. Kansas took over with good field position, but they come up empty-handed. And, Steve, you know, you and I have been talking about how important it is for this team to score touchdowns and not get field goals. But that was a golden opportunity to put points on the board. Well, but the other thing is, is that the defense has found a way to put Colorado, at least on their last, uh, uh, last two drives, to three downs and punt, and they're out of there. So that's good for Kansas. That's a confidence builder, and that's what they wanted to be able to do. But I think in order for Kansas to be successful to win, their best defense is probably going to be their offense, trying to sustain some type of drive to keep that powerful Colorado offense off the field. 53 seconds left in the first quarter. Buffalo's lead at 7-0. Steve Davis, Brian Nooner, I'm Ron Thuman, joining you from a beautiful day in Lawrence, Kansas. Decker has some pressure, tries to get rid of it. Patrick Brown is the man who was putting pressure on Detmer, and he was able to just toss it away. McGraw also in on the scuffle. In the backfield to sack this Kansas front four doesn't sack a right, lot. Right there he is. See, he's getting ready to come on the blitz, but he's outside, so he looks like he's going to play past the fence. And then Coy, this is what I saw on video, where at times he needs to take the hit and go down. He throws the ball and throws it up in the air, and he can't see it. So the problem is, is that those kind get picked off. Those make mistakes. Kansas has only seven sacks this year, but Coach is saying that we've had a lot of opportunities, and that was one of them. Lendon Henry on the ground, trying that right side. And the junior who has rushed for over 300 yards already this year, has four rushing touchdowns, one through the air. They are missing Dwayne Sherrington this week, another backup tailback. He has been suspended because of the phone gate scandal they had a few weeks ago. Really a great job by Jamie Harris, 37, to react on that play, to come up. Those cornerbacks really are, some they can just describe them sometimes on an island, but they have to play against the Colorado receivers, worried about the deep threat, but then know that they have the ability to be very effective in the run, so you've got to come up and uh, be able to protect the perimeter of the, uh, of the defensive front, and he did a great job to make the tackle. Well, Kansas has called a timeout with 18 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Let's take our Lincoln Mercury Conference standings brought to you by your local Lincoln Mercury dealers and America's finest new sport utility, the Mercury Mountaineer. We saw in the North Division standings at the top of the show. Kansas will go to Nebraska next week. And, of course, Colorado winds up their season at Nebraska. That will probably be determining who will go to St. Louis. And in the South, Texas Tech is 3-1. They've had their hands full this year. Had a big victory last week against this Kansas team. But the Longhorns and the Aggies right behind. And, Steve, I'm going to mention it. How about those Sooners beating Texas? Well, I was not surprised. I was not surprised because Texas had not been playing well. They took it on the chin by Virginia and uh, Notre Dame. And, and Oklahoma was hungry and looking for a victory. And that Baylor team is a lot better than what their conference record shows at 0-2. Those are the kind of games you're going to see in the Big 12. Mm -hmm. Last week, Iowa State, Texas A&M. Iowa State plays lights out. Texas A&M manages the game and wins it. But I think on uh, any Saturday, things can happen and turn a game into uh, a real ball game very quickly. So some of the lesser teams certainly are more than competitive. On third and five, Detmer the straight drop. He has a lot of room to run, but this time he tries to force the pass. And Kansas' strategy of calling timeout to force Colorado to punt into the win is going to pay off. But Steve, I thought he had some room. He could have probably run for that first down. He probably could have, and he, he oftentimes will. But I think what's happening is Kansas is doing a very good job of mixing up the fronts and what he sees and putting pressure on him. Pressure's coming from different places in the field. He certainly did have time to run 
run forward and get the first and ten. And then on top of that, because he doesn't set his feet, he throws a bad pass. Isaac Bird set to receive the punt. Detmer now just 5 of 12 after that impressive opening drive. This time, Peach's punt not too bad into the wind. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 24-yard line, and that is where Kansas will take over with just five seconds left to play in the first quarter. Punt of 34 yards, no return, and Coy Detmer led the Buffs on that opening drive with a touchdown. Looked impressive, but the offense has stalled since then. Now let's see if Ben Roots taking over from Matt Johnner can get something going offensively for the Jayhawks. Last week, this Jayhawk team season low 17 points. New Heisel knows exactly what Detmer's going for. Well, now we uh, had a penalty flag thrown on that punt, and they may force Colorado to kick it again. It's still going to be fourth down. I think it may have been a dead ball foul. Now they're saying it was a legal formation, so Peach, who dodged the bullet the first time, is going to try it again, and Bird standing at his 30. This time he gets off a lot better kick. Bird has a chance to return it from the 23. He has some running room. Look out. Heads to the right side. He has one man to beat and two blockers. Bird to the 30. Bird is finally knocked out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. A 39-yard kick of 58-yard return. See, we talked about the specialty teams of Colorado, how they have struggled kicking the football, and it jumps up and bites them again. Kansas will take over with excellent field position. We'll be back right after this word from Sitco. Look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 country. Sitco says go. Okay. I want to see who didn't make that Can we see a replay now? Can we see a replay of that real quick? I want to see who, who didn't make that block at the end. Yeah, go ahead and run it. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. Which Okay, which one are you going with first? Okay, all right. What really was important for Kansas that we start the uh, get ready to start the second quarter is that they had to make big plays in the kicking game. Isaac Bird does a wonderful job, draws everyone in, then he breaks to the outside and does an exceptional job because he doesn't have blazing speed, but he's directing traffic and goes right down the field to take him to the 20-yard line to give Kansas excellent field position. That's the kind of big plays they have to make. They lead the nation in punt returns. Officially, it went down as a 57-yard return for Isaac Bird, who returned that one against Oklahoma. So Bird is doing it on both sides. 
Start of the second quarter, Sanders and Henley in the backfield for Kansas, and it'll be Henley trying the left side. A little bit of rushing room. May have gotten inside the 15 down to about the 14 yard line. A little pushing and shoving going around. Watch what it, he goes about right here and stops. Everybody comes in, then he breaks outside. That's what caused everything to collapse on the punt re the turn team. The defense of Colorado tried to collapse on him, and then he just breaks the sidelines, and he just can't get one block right there. Let's see, out of, uh, I couldn't find out who he was. Who that he was get a block from? Jones. Was it Jones? I think it may have been Jones. Yeah. Needed a block. Mark Sanders on the carry. This Kansas team has been very successful in the red zone this year. They are 20 of 22 coming into the game. 17 touchdowns. That is very impressive. Now let's see how stiff this Colorado defense could get. Third and two for the Jayhawks. 14-02 left to play in the first quarter. Kansas really needs to make something happen. They had the ball last time in the plus. At, they took the ball to plus 39. And then now they start the drive, this drive at their, the 20 of Colorado. So they've got to be able to capitalize and get some points on the board. Sanders and Henley in the backfield again. Third and two, and that is going to be the final timeout, I believe, for Kansas in this half. They're going to have to burn another one. Glenn Mason knows this is a golden opportunity to put points on the board, and they're going to take advantage of it. Timeout, 1341, left in the half. That was good. That was good. Talk about how Pat Rule wasn't pleased with it. Three tight ends. Huh? Okay. Let me know again if you see that again. Okay. Right here. Week, a crucial South Division Big 12 encounter as Brandon Stewart, Albert Connell, and the Texas a and They put Friday in motion, right? That's a guy who Colorado coaches think that when they put him in motion, that's that's who they're going to go if they're going to throw the ball. They said he's their touchdown guy. No wide receiver. Next week, a crucial South Division Big 12 encounter as Brandon Stewart, Albert Connell, and the Texas A&M Aggies team up against Heisman Trophy candidate Byron Hanspard of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Hanspard is the nation's leading rusher, averaging almost 218 yards per game. Catch the action from Kyle Field in College Station next Saturday morning. And Steve and I will be there for that game, and that's going to be a dandy, especially how Texas Tech upset a and last year on the last play of the game. Kansas with third and two balls on the 12-yard line, no wide receivers, three tight ends in the ball game. Hosea Friday goes in motion. They give it to Henley. He is going to be stuffed at about the 10-yard line and pushed back. He will be close to the first down. The Animal Navy's coming out from that linebacker spot. The 6'3 sophomore out of Oakland, California. Navy's coming out. One of the great names in college football. That is good for a first down. Watch right here what happens. This He goes right in there and makes the, the trap play. And that's what cleared it open. Hosea Friday, number 13, went inside, made a great block on the linebacker, and made the play work. Five carries, 20 yards for Henley. He drops the football and is loose. Fumble. Henley is going to get the ball back, but Kansas is going to lose a couple of yards on that play. They don't turn the ball over very many times. That is only the fifth fumble this year for Kansas. They have only lost one of them. 
Ben Roots has not played all that much this year. He's thrown the ball only 13 times. So he hasn't had a great deal of exposure, and he's probably a little bit rusty, and he just didn't put the ball where it needed to be for June Henley to put it away. Isaac Bird wide to the right. Henley the lone setback. Second and 15. Bird is knocked down, and that is going to be pass interference, and the Colorado defenders don't like it. Marcus Washington pleading his case. Was it catchable? I think that's probably the discussion the officials are going to talk about. Was that pass catchable? That's the discussion that they're going through, certainly, whether it's catchable, but there was a bump. Kansas really felt like they could attack both Dalton Simmons, number seven, and Marcus Washington, number 37, those two corners, because Simmons has had a knee injury a couple of years ago. His footwork still struggles. Marcus Washington's not been focused and been somewhat inconsistent, so they thought they might be able to make something happen against those two corners. And let's listen in. On the defense, the penalty is first down at the spot of the foul. Big break for Kansas. Bud Alexander, our referee today. Kansas, after the fumble, was pushed back, but this is interference. You'll see Isaac Burke come into the screen right there, and there's the hit. Close enough to say he certainly could catch the ball, so he had to go to the turf. Marcus Washington was premature in the hit. Should not have hit him, make contact. Good call. First and goal, ball on the seven. John Gordon slipped wide to the left. Henley drives the left side. Gets near the five, inside the five, down to about the four before Matt Russell wraps him up. Russell, the 6'2 senior linebacker at a Fairview Heights. He may just win the Buckus Award this year, one of the semifinalists. He is a good one. Said he read Brian Bosworth's book, and he couldn't believe how similar he was to the Bos. The haircut, the whole bit. He is a charismatic player who loves to play this game of football. He really has a, just an incredible sense for the football. He really controls the middle of the field. Not great enough speed to get way outside, but he controls and stalks the middle. Henley again, the left side. He is going to be close, but not in. One of the things the Colorado coaches were really weary of, wary of was the fact that if that off-tackle play worked with June Henley, they said if that thing starts going consistently, or they can pick up three, four yards, we might be in trouble. Offensive line doing a nice job for Kansas. Matt Russell calling the defensive signals for the buff. Third down and goal, ball is sitting on the one-yard line. Henley and Sanders in the backfield. Henley, stuck. Now they're saying the ball was loose, it was fumbled. Does Colorado have it? Yes, they do! June Henley was hit, coughed up the football, and Colorado recovered. Check Kansas's toes. They may have just shot themselves in the foot and knocked a few off. <laughs> These are the very mistakes that Kansas can not afford to make. They've got to be able to possess the ball, control the ball, and be able to put it in the end zone and score when opportunities present themselves. Let's watch, watch what happens if he trips it. June Henley just gets truly stuffed. Not a hole there, trying to make something out of totally nothing. And for some reason, he gets hit, and the ball is gets separated from him. Well, Aaron Marshall and Ryan Olson were there to scoop it up, and Kenny Wilkins came up with it. June Henley. He doesn't fumble very much. They are number two in the nation in turnover margin. So Colorado takes over first and ten, ball on the one-yard line. Good shot from behind, Coy Dutton. He's going to oh, keep it himself. They run the option, although that was a busted play, I believe, but they're not afraid to run that option to try to keep a defense on it. Despite Coy's knee problems he had last year. If you're looking for some sunshine out of that uh, fumble play, Kansas is really doing a good job of making Colorado going long distance. Except for the first drive, they've been at the minus 24, the minus 12, the minus 20, and the, their own one yard line. So that's making Colorado in this big play offense go long distance is, with, is exactly what Kansas has wanted to do. Detmer picked up only two on the play. Fisk and Henry in the backfield. 
Henry with the ball up to about the four yard line. Not much there. Cop makes the stop. Colorado offense, amazing. 7.2 average on first down. But Kansas has been able to slice that probably less than half of that. As you said, forcing Colorado in those long situations where they are now, third and seven. Kansas is giving Coy Detmer a lot of things to look at. The front are different. They're, they're doing a lot of interior stunt, giving a lot of different pictures in terms of zone versus man. Detmer pumps, pulls it down, lets it go, and it's complete to James Kidd. He crosses the 10, close to the first down, and I think he'll probably have it. Made his way up to about the 12-yard line, and that's where he needed to get to. What you really like about Coy Detmer is when he does get pressure and he gets clear away from the uh, where he can have good vision, he just finds an open receiver. He really never loses his poise. He stays in there and just finds an open guy and makes it and throws a strike. He does that consistently when, when you watch him on video, and he just loves to be able to be in that position. He gets him out of the bad play. First and 10, ball on the 12. Colorado keeps it on the ground, a little bit of running room over the 15 to the 17 yard line, and it's Lyndon Henry again. At his first start of his collegiate career last week against Oklahoma State, rushed for 101 yards, but he fumbled the ball twice. And he took it very personally, and Rick Neuheisel was telling me last night, that I have talked to Henry about that to protect the football, and that if he didn't fumble the football last week, it would have been a perfect game for that young man. Picked up four on the play, sets up a second down and six situation. Detmer changing the play at the line. They are establishing the run as Henry finds some running room, gets a first down and a little bit more to spare. Maurice Gaddy has to come up from that safety spot to make a stop. Gaddy didn't play last week because of an injury. They are glad to have him back in that secondary. When you look at Colorado, you, you think here with all these speed receivers, a very talented quarterback, you look at them and think they're a finesse team. What they really are is a physical team that's disguised as a finesse team, and that's why Lyndon Henry's in the ballgame. He's the more physical, punishing runner. They're trying to establish the running game to get the tempo that they wanted to accomplish in this ballgame. Well, he has five carries for 26 yards already on first and 10. They keep it on the ground again. Henry makes his way up to about the 34-yard line before Ronnie Ward makes his stop. One thing Kansas has done so far, they've kept a big play out of this ball game. They really have kept Colorado from making a big play in receivers, and they haven't been able to throw the ball significantly down the field. So part of the game plan is certainly working to perfection right now. Now Colorado had trouble rushing the football a couple of times this year. Had only 70 yards against Michigan, 91 against A&M. Detmer, the pressure is on, he lets it go, the pass is complete. Right into the hands of Ray Caruth, who's dropped as he crosses the 35 to the 36 yard line. And Detmer took a shot on that play, and we have a penalty flag down but I think it might be holding. Indeed it is. That's already the fourth penalty for Rick Neuheisel's Colorado Buffaloes. That is what they had last week against Oklahoma State. So they've had a mistake on the specialty teams and now they're having the penalties jumping up and biting them again. Holding on the offense. 10 yards to the spot of the foul. Replace second down. In talking to Carl Durrell, the offensive coordinator, that was one of the areas, you know, to eliminate the mental mistakes and reduce the penalties. That was the focus all week long that Colorado has had because it has just killed them. It, it just stops drives. It takes away your momentum, and it causes you to lose a little bit of your confidence. So that's what happened to Colorado. And that sets up a second down and 17 for Detmer and company. Great drop, he has some time, he hit as he releases the ball, and it's going to be intercepted at the 44-yard line. Tony Blevins with his second interception of the year. But Boy Detmer took quite a shot from Adrian Green coming from that right tackle spot. Lowered the boom on Detmer right as he released the football, and that allowed Blevins to come up with the interception. 
the Kansas coaches really felt like if they could put pressure on Coy Detmer, that he will have a tendency to maybe throw the ball like any quarterback and float it, and that's exactly what happened. Wonderful job inside to make that play. Watch the pressure all the way. Everybody is manned up, see? So he's going to be looking at man coverage. Watch the pressure come. Everyone is manned up. You see what happens. And he just throws because he's getting pressure and throws the ball high. He didn't get to see his decision. Back to live action. Johnner back into the lineup. His hand off to Henley, and Henley finds some running room. And you can just see the confidence of Kansas starting to get it. One would expect, Steve, after what happened last year, that Colorado really needed to come in here and throw some kind of knockout punch the first couple quarters to get the momentum on their side. But they have allowed Kansas, through penalties and specialty teams, to gain some momentum. They, they really are getting great chances in the first half. They've got to convert. Henley is stopped right about the 25-yard line. We talked about where Colorado had the ball. Look where Kansas has had the football. They've had it at their own 31, their own 41. They've had it at Colorado's 39, Colorado's 20, and now Colorado's 34. They've got to be able to convert and make something happen. They're not going to get this many chances. No, they're not. Now the officials want to have a timeout for a measurement. I mean, really, if you're Kansas, you got to be oh, yeah. feeling like, guys, we, we can, we're playing better and gaining confidence. And if you're Colorado, you have to be concerned because in the first half, you have outscored opponents by 61. In the second half, they're even with their opponents. Both have only scored 43 points in the second half, and Rick Neuheisel is very concerned about that. That is a first down. Rick telling us last night, he and Carl Durrell both said, listen, we scratched our heads about it. We can't figure out why we don't score more points in the second half. He's just glad he scores a lot in the first half. Offensively, it is the little things, the mistakes, the penalties, uh, field position, those kind of things that just really upset the rhythm. And that's one of the things that Colorado offensively struggle with, rhythm. Henley, the hole was there, but it closes quickly as he crosses the 25. It's down about the 23-yard line, maybe picked up a yard on the play. Matt Russell coming up to close the hole. Russell said he chose number 16 because he knew that if you saw a linebacker wearing 16, you'd get some kind of exposure. <laughs> he wanted a single digit. Coach McCartney, uh, Bill McCartney, would not let him have it. He said, so I chose 16, and his license plate even has Buff 16 on it. I think what you like about Matt Russell is that, you know, he plays with enthusiasm. He electrifies his teammates. They rally around him. That's what uh, that's what you want in a football player and a middle linebacker. Jada will roll up. The pressure is on, and he is going to be dropped. That seemed almost like an uncontested sack by Greg Jones, his fifth of the year. I don't think anybody touched him, Steve. Well, you know, he's looking, trying to get away, and he's not the most mobile quarterback, and yet he's... He just, it is kind of a give up play. The protection broke down and nobody was there. He couldn't throw the ball. And then he's, a, he's not the running quarterback of the two or the most mobile of the two. And you try to put him on the corner. I think Colorado defense may have been looking for that little shuttle pass to Kansas run. John or again, there's the shuttle pass to Henley. He crosses the 25, crosses the 20. Penalty flag is thrown as he has run out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. And I think Kansas may be penalized for a block in the back. Once again, a golden opportunity for the Jayhawks. Now they're going to call it holding. Glenn Mason cannot be happy with that. They're going to talk to Steve Rosga about it, the senior. See what they want to do. He's going to check the sideline just to make sure. But A.J. Kristoff telling us last night, the defensive coordinator of Colorado, that he knew that they had this shuttle pass, and his players were very much aware of it. You know, we were talking about the previous play, whether, whether, it, whether it looked... Uh, Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, replay third down. The earlier play that Matt John or run where we were... Uh, was we're not very impressed with the performance of it. Maybe it was for a reason. Watch what happens. You're going to see pressure come here, and on a on a shuffle type pass, you want to take advantage of that. Those those happen. Those hard pressing ends make opportunity and create seams, and that's why that play was successful. You try to take advantage, and that neutralizes the speed. And that's what they're trying to do: is make Colorado think 
rather than just react and, and, and press the way they are and put pressure on the quarterback. On third and 16, and again, Henley is going to be dropped this time by strong safety Ryan Black, his first sack of the year. The junior out of Phoenix, Arizona, who has been a very big surprise for this Colorado Buffalo team. Leads him in tackles of 75. Kansas needs to make something happen. They're grabbing everything they've got. It just totally breaks down. Ryan Black, the strong safety, is on a blitz, and they guess correctly and stop the play. They said it wasn't a sack, wasn't a sack, just a great play by Young Black. But Kansas had great field position, and they've let it slip away. Then they get a short punt from Dean Royal takes a Colorado bounce and it'll be down at about the 18 yard line only a 16 yard punt we'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper just what the doctor ordered yeah, he is. oh the punting is atrocious have mercy yeah yeah, but still 16 yards. There you go. I mean, that, that ball wasn't even, didn't have a chance. The other guy had at least 30 into the win. 17 is the official call on that kick. Good night. Talk about squandering. with just over four minutes left in the second. They still hold on to that 7 nothing lead. Let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines storyline. Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. See? Well, Colorado scores on the first possession. They take it down the field. They really operate just the way they wanted to. You see uh, Coy Detmer's statistics. He has been managed by Kansas, but he's been very effective. Kansas gets a big punt return, 57 yards, but the real story is Kansas' inability to convert on field position opportunities. Detmer rolls out, looking in the middle of the field, and the pass is caught at the 50-yard line. And tripped up from behind, it is Ray Carruth. There is a classic example of the touch that Coy Detmer has on his football. Carruth gets up slowly, 36 yards on the completion. He's looking down to that right knee. Coy's ability just to be mobile and get away from all the pressure. He does a wonderful job getting outside. He has plenty of time. No one in his face. And that's a hard pass to throw. He's throwing, you know, he's throwing to his left and throwing really with his arm behind his body. So he's having to really throw across his body. That's a hard arm throw to make. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. Lyndon Harry getting the carry, getting the carry. Somebody blew a sneaker. James Kidd put it back on. Take a look at the Dr. Pepper Roundup, updating you on some scores. Virginia all over North Carolina State. BC leading Rutgers at intermission. Michigan trailing Indiana at the half. And Penn State trailing Iowa in the second. And Wisconsin trailing Northwestern, or Wisconsin leading Northwestern. And in the SEC, George Vanderbilt, Conference USA, Cincinnati on top of Houston. And Arkansas on the Gamecock side up to seven. Second and nine. They're going to keep it on the ground with Henry as he crosses the 40 down to about the 39 yard line. Although it is homecoming here, I, I'm just amazed the crowd is so quiet. They've had a few things to cheer about, but not much uh, as far as noise right now. Well, I, I think a 7 nothing lead is something uh, that. 
Kansas fans that, that Colorado has a 7 nothing lead is something they should get excited about because their team's had opportunities and, uh, and, and Colorado, except for a couple of plays, has really not been able, they're not being dominating on the field. Like we cued the crowd, they started to get a little noisy there. Carruth in motion, he cuts across the middle of the field. Pass is caught by Carruth, but he is dropped after a pickup of only two. Excellent defense by Patrick Brown of Kansas. Tackle by Maurice Getty. I think they've seen that in the film before. You see Ray Carruth do a lot of crossing type routes. He, he comes across the middle. That's a brave position for a guy to go. Look at a wonderful one-arm catch. He really gets stopped, and he has to extend his arm and makes it with one hand. Or he's Getty on the stop, and that brings up a fourth down and three situation for Colorado with two minutes left to play in the first half. You see the numbers on Ray Carruth. Number two in the Big 12 in receiving yards and receptions. Colorado wants to talk about it with 155. Colorado they lead it 7 up. Big 12 football will return after these local minutes. Getting the meat of the season this time of the year, I, I like. I, I love it. Still out there. Yeah. I tell you what, I like that OU game tonight. That could be a that could be a very good football game. I was happy for John last week. Oh. Let's see. They'll probably go with the uh, inside isolation what? play. I would imagine. Okay. Good. You, you would. What haven't we gotten into that we want to That's fine. Go up? with uh, Nioli. What's that? He's going to ISO on Nile. Okay. He's been kind of quiet, hasn't he? Two minutes along with Steve Davis and Brian Nooner. I'm round two of Colorado clinging to a seven nothing lead. They face a fourth down and three situation. They are one of four on first downs this year, and they're going to go for it. Now the crowd getting into it. Two wide to the right, one to the left. Watch the reverse. Here it comes. He's got a lot of running room. Look out, that could be six. Carruth gets knocked out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Jason Harris finally pushing him out. A great call by Carl Durrell and that offensive staff of Colorado. Carruth had rushed three times for 53 yards this year. That one was good for 30. What happens is they're going to go down the line. You've got a pulling guard. They get everybody going this way, and then will come the reverse play. This is the big play potential that Colorado has always had in their arsenal. They've got great speed, and Ray Carruth is that 4-3 guy that can get down the field very quickly. Big, big play. Saw Kyle Smith and Adam Reed, the big guys on the line, getting down the line of scrimmage to make a couple of blocks. Maury Scatty wrestles down Lyndon Harry. And we have a flag on the play. Henry, I'm going to get his name right yet. Penalty flag is down. Colorado players pointing over at Kansas. And it will be against the Jayhawks. Rick Neuheisel, big sigh of relief. Ruth getting a little work on his arm. A little turf burn, maybe. And, Ron, that's the very thing the Kansas coaches were very concerned about. That big play Defense potential. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Half the distance to goal line. Replay first down. The big play potential of, of Colorado. 
Kansas has had really a lot of benefits that they've not been able to take advantage of. They had good field position. They'd maintained the big play and kept Colorado controlled. Colorado was playing flat in the first half, and then they come out in one play, one big play. Colorado's gotten in a position to score touchdown. That's right. You see Kansas offense has not done a whole lot. Just over 30 yards in this game. But they've had chances. They've had many opportunities. First and goal ball on the four-yard line. Henry drives the right side, and he is going to be stuffed and lose about three on the play. Leading the charge, Chris Jones from that linebacker spot. Also coming up, Maurice Gaddy. Jones, the senior out of Newton, Kansas. That's what you want to see when you're facing that second first down play and goal to go. Have your defense come up and make a big stop. Second and goal. Ball on the seven. Brody Hefner comes out for Colorado at tight end. Desmond Dennis back in. Five defensive backs now in for Kansas. Denver pumps once, looks in the end zone. He can run it in, but he's tucked from behind. Down Dropped the at the four-yard line. Ron Warner on the stop. The 6'3", 220-pound junior out of Independence, Kansas. Catching him from the backside. Ron Warner comes all the way from the backside. Coy Detmer sees an open field and wants to take advantage of it. But here's the tenacious effort to make the play behind coming all the way across the field to make the play. Good effort by Kansas. That is Yeoman's effort by Ron Warner to come all the way around and try to get Detmer from behind as Colorado is going to call his timeout as they're facing third and goal, ball at about the three and a half yard line. This Kansas defense has done just about everything they've been asked to do today, Steve. Wouldn't you agree? Well, they, they really haven't, except for the one big play on the reverse play. They've been able to manage Colorado. They're going to give up a lot of yards. This is an outstanding offensive football team, but they've been able to, to really do their job. The offense hasn't done their part. They haven't helped them. They haven't produced the yardage, and they haven't taken advantage of field position that's been uh, earned by uh, the Kansas defense. One thing Rick Neuheisel wanted to do to come into this game is try to increase the run production a little bit. At times, they've looked very good at it. That opening drive was so impressive for Coy Detmer and company, but since then, that defense has really stood up to the challenge. Just 10 seconds left to play in this first half. Colorado, that very explosive offense, and when you put them in a two-minute situation, they take advantage of it. Since Rick Neuheisel has come in, you can see they've only missed on five occasions during a two-minute drill to get some type of points on the board. Third and goal, ball at about the three-and-a-half-yard line. Two-step drop, Detmer touch pass, knocked away, intended for James Kidd, Jamie Harris on the coverage. What happens on the play is Jamie Kidd, off of the pump fake, will get open on Jamie Harris. Coy Detmer wishes he had this one back because he lofts it up, and then it gives Jamie Harris time to react, time to get back into the play. you got to put the ball away. Get it away where that defensive back cannot get to it. I, I think Coy took too much off of it, and that gave him an opportunity to knock it away. Jason Leslie, he's 4 of 7 this year. This is the equivalent of an extra point. Standing on the 10. I don't think they have enough players on the field. That's what Leslie's motion to do. Either that or trying to get uh, Kansas to jump off sides. Nope. Dead ball. Delay of the game. Offense. Well, it is oh. delay of game. There are certainly two benefits here. One, uh, trying to draw Kansas off, but I think secondly, with a little bit more distance away, just mathematically, he's going to create a situation where he's got a better angle. Dead ball, delay of the game, offense, the penalty is refused. Kansas declines the penalty. Well, so Kansas re just refuse it, get them right back. That's, that's the other, that's the other plus. You got to love this cat and mouse thing we got working here. Jason Leslie will try it again. 20 yard field goal, Rosk is the holder. Final play of the first half. Colorado already leading 7 0. Good snap. Good hold by Rosgood. 
Leslie boots it through. The snap was a little bit off to the side. So Roska is able to pick it up, put the ball down. Leslie kicks it through. Watch Roska on this. He is getting the congratulations from Leslie for good reason. Roska bobbles the ball. The kicker had already started his motion, so he had to start again and, and fortunately puts it through. See, watch the stutter right here. He has to slow it down, come back. That's very difficult. Great oh, job oh. by Colorado's kicker to put that thing through. And he turns to the holder right away and says, good job. We have one second left to play in the first half as Roscoe comes up with a big play. Thorpe candidate shaves his head before the games. Said last night after we talked to him, he said, I got to go shave my head. He goes, I do it before every game. He's got that middle linebacker look about him. He's got the earring, the bald head. He is quite the big hitter, too. He's one of the classic funny guys on this team. For his team picture, he put on a wig, <laughs> wore a tie, and tied it in a knot instead of any type of good-looking knot. Of course, last week he had that interception return that went for over 100 yards, but he told us last night he almost ran out of gas. Yeah, I was, uh, I was considering stepping out of bounds uh, pretty much right away. And... Uh, and it probably was evident just watching me try and run. And really what I was thinking uh, as I got to about the 30 was I'm at the straightaway now and I'm not at top speed and I'm afraid I'm gonna get caught from behind. And that, that's like one of those shameful things you never wanna have happen is to get caught from behind. So I started looking around and got real nervous and luckily I made it. He said as soon as he hit the end zone, he was cramping up. All his teammates jumped on him to congratulate him. He said, it started to hurt, and I started yelling right away, get off me, it hurts. <laughs> congratulate me later. Very heady player, makes all the calls in the defensive secondary, and as you said, made 14 tackles last week. Big play. Leslie's going to do the onside kick just to waste some time because there's only one second left. Didn't want to take a chance of a return, and that's the way the first half is going to end. So Colorado scores on their first drive, and they score on their last drive of the opening half, and they will head to the locker room with a 10-0 lead, far from comfortable. Brian Nooner's on the sideline with Rick Neuheisel. Brian? Rick, you start the game on a very strong note, and you get three on this one, but since that time, that opening drive, you struggled a little on offense. Well, the wind's playing a little havoc with our throwing game, and uh, they're doing a nice job with the, with the run defense, so... We'll go back, tool up, and I think uh, we'll play real well in the second half. Speaking of defense, Kansas has had some nice opportunities, and your defense has really dug in inside the 30. I'm very proud of our defense, especially in the red zone. It's been that way all year. We can get 30 more great minutes out of these kids. We're going to go home with a win. Okay, thanks, Rick. Thanks for joining us. Ron, let's send it back up to you. All right, we still have a lot of football left to be played. Rosgen Company heading to the locker room, and they lead it by 10. We'll be back to Lawrence, Kansas, for their halftime activities right after this. The first half has been brought to you by Sonic Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And by Southwestern Bell. Count out Southwestern Bell for the communication services you'll use every day. Yes, it's that simple. And by Mazda. Experience cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. I have a card to read going to the break here. I think it's a sit-go card. Yeah. So I'm getting to know these guys. I only think we can get a If I could only get London Henry's name right, I keep calling him Harry. But I even said I said, folks, I'll get it right. Yeah, I got it. So you, you're 
were also on the football committee, aren't you? The NCAA football committee? No. Well, I was so basketball. I just got out of the basketball committee, but I'm not. Football postseason committee? Big 12 playoff game? Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not on that. Oh, you're not on that? No, no. I was going to say, that, that is the only football committee, the postseason. Okay, right. Bill Burns is the Big 12 postseason. There we go. It is a beautiful homecoming Saturday in Lawrence, Kansas, and the Jayhawks are hanging tough with the Colorado Buffaloes in intermission, and the Buffs lead it 10 to nothing. Hi, everybody. I'm along with Dr. Bob Frederick, the athletic director here in Kansas. I'm Ron Thule. And Dr. Frederick, first of all, this is a pretty good football game, and I think every Kansas fan has to be pleased with the way things have gone so far. It really is. I was concerned, Ron, the first time Colorado marched down the field that uh, we might be in for a long day, but we've played very well. We've had some good breaks. Uh, we just haven't been able to capitalize and punch it into the end zone, but I'm, I'm really pleased about uh, the way things have gone. Uh, Bob, your name has been synonymous with college athletics for a new number of years, and you just get finished a five-year stint on the NCAA Basketball Committee. Have you been surprised at how much college athletics has grown the last few years? Well, I think it's been amazing, the growth of uh, uh, basketball and football and the interest in it. And I'm really pleased uh, about that because I think the one thing that differ differentiates us from the pro game is there is a much greater loyalty factor uh, with the uh, free agency and all that in pro sports. People tend to move around, but uh, once the young man a young woman goes to college, it seems like he or she is there forever, and I, I think that loyalty is really important. And you have a lot of excitement here at Kansas. Last night, believe it or not, basketball practice, your version of the Midnight Madness. Now you've got a football team that is up there in the national rankings year after year. I think this is a pretty good time here in Lawrence. This has uh, really been fun, and, and today's crowd is reflective of what's happened uh, uh, with our football program because uh, coming off a 10-2 and two season last year in the Aloha Bowl, uh, we're, our last two home games have been sold out, and we're really pleased about that. And that's a real change and a credit to Glenn Mason. Now with Glenn Mason and Roy Williams running the helmet, the football and the basketball, the future is big and bright here at Kansas. Well, we're, we're excited about it. Uh, we now have a 20-sport program for men and women and about 550 student athletes, and uh, we're really proud of what they're accomplishing. All right, Dr. Frederick, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Bob Frederick, the athletic director here at Kansas. As Kansas trails at halftime, 10 to nothing, and we'll be back right after this word from Sitco. Look for the sign of quality throughout Big 12 country. Sitco says go. In the late 1960s, the artificial playing surface promised to revolutionize the game of football. Teams quickly paved over the old grass fields to modernize and upgrade the carpet. Over 30 years later, the original claims of health benefits to players are still... Tell Big Ken my, uh, I'll just say my typical, uh, here's, uh, here's Paul Nelson. Roll cue. Um, I'm going to say, uh, to take a look at the turf transformation, um, here's Paul Nelson. Tr I'm going to, I'm going to say turf transformation situation. Just for you. 
How much time till we're back? Okay. Back here in Lawrence, Kansas, the wind continues to blow. Welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas. We're at the half. Colorado leading Kansas by a count of 10 to nothing. The wind continues to blow here at Memorial Stadium. And as you take a look behind me, you can see that the field here at Memorial Stadium is an artificial surface. But there's a trend developing in the Big 12 Conference. It's a turf transformation situation. And with more on that, here we go. The approach by Grimes on the boot, and this is going to go out. In the late 1960s, the artificial playing surface promised to revolutionize the game of football. Teams quickly paved over the old grass fields to modernize and upgrade the carpet. Over 30 years later, the original claims of health benefits to players are still being questioned. The new trend is slowly getting back to earth. In 1995, only two Big 12 schools played on natural grass. This season, five conference schools are on the green as Iowa State, Texas, and Texas A&M made the change over the winter. Players seem to like the change at Texas where the new grass has allowed more freedom on the field. First, a player rather dive on grass knowing they won't come up with turf burns and skin missing and, you know, just injuries like that. You know, turf catches your ankles. It's just a more natural feel on grass, a more natural game, and I, I'd rather play on grass any time than turf. Natural grass is also more versatile than its artificial counterpart. The way it's grown, fertilized, and even mowed can make a difference in play. When Iowa State made the decision to change, they brought in turf expert Mike Andreessen, who handled the flood of 93 for the Iowa Cubs when he was head groundskeeper there. We're in the business of being a, a part of the team where uh, if they want a fast field, we can give them a fast field. If they want it soft and slow, we can give it to them slow. And, uh, and whether it's a rainy day, 40 degrees, or whether it's hot and 80 degrees, making sure that it plays the same each time. Here at Iowa State, second-year head coach Dan McCarney sees the health benefits of having a grass playing surface. But he also sees some reasons to have one that aren't so obvious. Well, we like it from a recruiting standpoint. I like to practice on grass. We practice every day on grass, and now we get to play our games. And uh, kids that come here to Iowa State know they're going to play at least six games a year on grass fields. Don't count out the artificial surface just yet, however. Three separate NCAA studies showed that the number of injuries were virtually identical to those on a grass plane surface. So for now, the question remains, grass or artificial? The answer for the majority of Big 12 schools remains carpet, but that percentage is slowly making a change. Paul Nelson, Big 12 Showcase. And as Paul mentioned, it was Texas A&M being one of the schools that switched back to natural grass. That's where we'll be next week in Aggie Land as the Aggies take on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Here at the half, Kansas trails Colorado in our game of the week. The score is 10 to nothing. Big 12 football continues after these local messages.
the uh, situation now. along with Steve Davis, I'm Rob Doolin, and I think Glenn Mason is probably telling his troops in the locker room right now, missed opportunity, can't afford to have them. Well, really, I wrote it down. They had four possessions beyond their own 40-yard line. Three of those started in Colorado territory, and they couldn't put points on the board. So that's one area that they've got to be able to convert. Kansas offense has got to contribute. They're giving a great effort out of the defense right now, but the offense is not making their uh, weight right now. Not exactly. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first 30 minutes of play. Well, what really happened, the first, the first big play of the game, in the first drive, Colorado really was dominant. Here's the touchdown, a, a three-yard pass uh, that was made the uh, touchdown 7 nothing at that time. They were strong all the way through. And then, later on, Kansas State had a great opportunity off of a punt return. Great job by Isaac Bird. Draws Kent Colorado in tight and he takes it down the sideline, but here again, they stalled, they could not convert and put points on the board. And then finally, a reverse play, Colorado runs the reverse play. This was a, the big play Kansas uh, had tried to avoid most of the first half and had been real successful. Ray Cruz takes it right down the sideline. This set up the field position for the field goal. Nevertheless, this Kansas offense is powerful, averaging almost 40 points in the game, and it's been almost three years since they were last shut out. Sitco celebrates the inaugural year of the Big 12 by looking back at critical fourth down situations when teams decided to go for it. We never got any numbers from the people downstairs. Shame any Christmas, folks. Yeah, but I let you know we we can have them now. It's well, we've had it in a lot of the places we've been to already. This we haven't had. We don't have it here though.
won eight straight on the road. And at halftime in Lawrence, they lead the Jayhawks 10-0. Let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines team must once again. Southwest Airlines, low fares every flight, every seat ever, every seat ever. Every day, Steve, it's all yours. Colorado has executed 38 plays, two plays for losses. They forced the pass of Kansas, only three of five and 30 yards. Really, Kansas hasn't got in track offensively, and that's the problem. They have controlled the, at least the time of possession. It's been a, kind of a wash in terms of who's controlling the line. Team effort. Henley is 24 yards, the rest of the team 27. They've got to get more help offensively. They have been able to force one turnover, and the secondary, except for one big play that Colorado had in the first half. They've been effective in that first half. Still a lot of football left to be played. Second half kickoff coming your way next. The second half is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. And by Discover Cards, proud partner of the Smithsonian's 150th anniversary. And by Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Hey, Come on, you got to hurry or I'm going. Okay. All right. Coach Colorado hit you on that first try, but since that time, you've done a nice job on defense. I, thought, I think we've played real well defensively. We give up some big, uh, big plays, but... Uh, they got those type of people, and offensively, I think we've made some improvement. We've messed up a couple of scoring opportunities, but uh, 10 points, second half will tell a story. All right. Anything different in the second half on offense you're going to do? Uh, we're going to do the same things, hopefully just a little better. All right. Thanks, Coach, right. for joining us. Hey, Brian, so you and Glenn going out after the game, you guys seem real tight there. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you, you and Glenn are all tight, man. You guys are good buddies, aren't you? Who, Glenn and I? <laughs> yeah, you remember he gave me that plane ride, you know. He... <laughs> Coach, wait a minute. What's Hawkins score? All right. Coach Colorado hit you on that first drive, but since that time, you've done a nice job on defense. I, thought, I think we've played real well defensively. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell you exactly why. When you look at total yards, that stands out in a big way. Well, what we said, it needed to be a team effort. And when you look at Kansas in terms of what they've done offensively, they've not been productive. Turnovers are even. Time of possession, Colorado's had it. But Kansas has to be able to contribute. The defense has played their hearts out. They've done their job. Field positions work to the advantage of Kansas. They've got to put the ball in the end zone. Actually, I think that yardage should have read 34 yards, not 51 for Kansas. They even did worse than that. Well, just a moment ago, Brian Neuter had a chance to talk with Coach Glenn Mason about the first 30 minutes of play. Good. All right. Coach Colorado hit you on that first try, but since that time, you've done a nice job on defense. I, thought, I think we've played real well defensively. We give up some big, uh, big plays, but uh, they got those type of people. And offensively, I think we've made some improvement. We've messed up a couple scoring opportunities, but... Uh, Ten points, second half will tell a story. All right, anything different in the second half on offense you're going to do? Uh, we're going to do the same things, hopefully just a little better. All right, thanks, Coach, right. for joining us. But Colorado held the football five minutes more than Kansas did in that first half. Detmer dodging a bunch of blue jerseys. Pass intended for Ray Carruth off his hands, and again, Detmer tasting a little astroturf. Patrick Brown is not afraid to come in and try to detonate Coy Detmer. The pressure comes from right here. Number 99, Ron Warner, comes in and makes the play. Really puts him, it forces him inside and off tempo. And now he knows he's being chased. Kansas has done a great job in the first half of putting pressure on Coy Detmer so he's not really throwing on time, on tempo, with his feet set. And it is a third down situation. Third and eight, Colorado 3 of 11 in third downs. And all three of those came on their opening drive. Detmer, straight drop, he has protection, pass is complete to Phil Savoy, and he's got some running room to the 50, to the 45, and he is going to be knocked down at about the 43-yard line. 
Bill Savoy, the first time we've called his name, it's 6'3", 195 pounds, junior out of Washington, D.C. Number three in the conference in receptions per game. What happens when you try to put pressure, when you try to put pressure on the uh, quarterback on a man coverage, you've got man coverage, everybody's manned up. Now watch Bill Savoy come right out, and he gets away right there, see? Sorry. There he makes the play, gets away. The defensive back's not able to play on him and stay close and loses his feet. So Boyd makes the play, a big play. Depper again has to step up in the pocket, throws it across the field. It is complete, and he is lucky on that one. Pull the rabbit's foot out of his back pocket. Able to get Herschel Troutman. Yeah, we talked about Savoy in that third down play. He has been the main target during third downs. Ten third down catches, nine have gone for first down. And this is a moment ago, that play. Here's what happened. The defender will fall down. Monolito Jones falls down, and he just gets away from him, and that's what opened the play up to give him the big opportunity down the field to move the ball. And on that last play, that was also good for a first down. So Colorado now first and ten, ball on the Kansas 31-yard line, and they're going to keep it on the ground. Troutman tries the left side. Colorado does distribute the ball around, Steve. I know it's, uh, at Oklahoma you were running the football, but how would you like seven different receivers with at least one catch on your football team? Not bad for Mr. Detmer and company. Well, he's got a lot of weapons in his arsenal, and, and of course, not only are they good receivers but they have speed and they do other things they can run reverse plays they can throw the ball they just are multi-talented in what they do so put tremendous pressure on defensive secondaries in terms of uh, if you don't put pressure on Coy Detmer then he's going to burn you one way or the other eventually well, Detmer was second and seven 13 10 left to play in the third quarter once again a couple of tight ends three wide receivers the boy wide to the right, they draw play it down to about the 20 yard line before Allen trips him up on the play. It's Herschel Troutman again. But they can keep you so off balance when you know they're going to throw the football, but then they come with that little sprint draw and try to get that running game going. You can't just tee off on Detmer. You've got to be careful and you have to respect that running game. Well, I said earlier that this is, a lot of people kind of look at Colorado with all the receivers as a finesse team. They're really a very physical team, and they want to run the football and be successful. And they're going to take their shots at you with their tremendous speed and their receivers' capabilities. Brody Hefner goes in motion from the tight end slot. Hefner straight drop, crossing pattern, passes complete to Caruth. Did he get in? Touchdown. <laughs> Ray Carruth with his second touchdown reception of 1996. The pass wasn't pretty, Steve, but it got the job done. We saw in the first half, here he is again in the slot, so he's going to come across the middle. They're man coverage, and you've got to get speed for speed to make this happen, and the defender just gives him too much cushion. Michael Allen gives him too much opportunity, and he just runs past him. Or Jason Harris, excuse me, Jason Harris is on the coverage, and Ray Cruz puts it past him. Plus play to attempt the extra point, and it is good. <laughs> so Ray Cruz, who had 166 yards receiving last week against Oklahoma State, looking to become the third Colorado player to break that 2,000-yard mark receiving, adds a couple more onto the list. Colorado leads at 17-0. We're in the third. I may have it here. So he's three TD passes away from Cordell Stewart's record. Do you have a high shot of it? That's it. Okay. It didn't flutter as much as I thought it did. Marion Hagen. Okay. Is it with that touchdown pass? Okay. But he did it here in the first quarter. Okay. 
I don't want to see it, man. It was gagged. Well, the, they were checking it for blood. You see the official stop the game a second ago? Yeah, wait till we get to the shower. Oh, that's going to feel so nice. There's nobody sitting. There's Bob Frederick's booth here and his kids are just eating all the food themselves. We'll go up there and snatch some of them M&M's and peanuts over here. Colorado scores on their first possession of the opening quarter, their first possession of the third quarter, and now they lead 17-0, courtesy of that man right there, Ray Carruth. What happens, you'll see him coming across the middle. He's been in a crossing pattern a, a lot today. He puts a lot of pressure on cornerbacks and safeties. Coy Deborah kind of lost it up. But what, really, Jason Harris just lost him. He, was, he had to cover him man to man, and he's three or four yards behind him, and all Coy Detmer does is just find the open man and throw the pass to him. Impressive 80-yard drive. The touchdown pass from Detmer puts him just three back in touchdown passes behind Cordell Stewart for the all-time CU record. So now Kansas, let's see if they can take advantage of something here, here in the third quarter. Kickoff is returnable by Eric Van, but he is going to be sacked up after he crosses the 30-yard line, and Kansas will begin the second half pretty good field position again. Matt Johnner will begin the second half at quarterback. Of course, he was replaced midway through that first half by Ben Ruth. Johnner able to finish out the sec second quarter. The numbers on John are in that opening half, two or three, 25 yards. But once again, they only had a total of 34 yards in that opening 30 minutes. Henley, the ball carrier, slipping some tackles, able to move across the 40-yard line up to about the 41. That'll be close to a first down before Steve Rosga pulled him down. June Henley hasn't played exceptionally well the last two weeks, but really he has done as much as he can do today because he has made plays, he's made opportunities. He gets outside. He's not the speed back, but he's got excellent balance. He's got to have space. He needs to be able to get outside. First man through, nothing there for Eric Galbraith. Henley had 24 yards in that opening half. That's a good for a first down, the run by Galbraith. Galbraith is junior out of Jefferson City, Missouri. June Henley, what a running back, though, for Kansas. In high school, he broke Archie Griffin's state record. Setting all kinds of records here at Kansas, and he has the football now. Not much blocking in front of him, and he is going to be pulled down after a pickup of about one. Ryan Black coming up in that strong safety position, helped out by Matt Russell on the play. Part of the problem that Kansas is running into is that this front seven of Colorado has good overall team speed. They've got their outside linebackers can run sideline to sideline. Matt Russell controls the middle. Greg Jones and Nick Ziegler, all those people that are running, they, they can run, and that's why it's tough getting outside. Colorado is not fooled on that play, especially Hannibal Navies and Matt Russell. Billy Mau Mau from that defensive tackle spot. Big number 77 out of Honolulu, Hawaii. He led the charge. This young man is up 20 pounds, up to over 300 pounds now, and he still runs a 4840. He is a native Tongan, and his name means damage and destroy. <laughs> Perfect for a defensive player. Third down and 12 for Kansas, a situation they don't want to be in. They have not been successful. Jonner is hit as he releases. He goes down, and the pass is incomplete. Matt Jonner has just about had his head taken off on the play. Ryan Olson coming in from that nose tackle spot. The junior out of Lakewood, Colorado, explodes into him. Watch Colorado. You'll see the pressure. Ryan Black, number six, is on a blitz, so that puts everybody in man coverage. Matt Jonner gets a, a taste of the AstroTurf here at Kansas Stadium. But the problem is, is put, Colorado puts great pressure, and then they force you to have to throw the ball quickly and on time. 
Ryan Olson, also an engineering student, 3.8 grade point average. He engineered that one in a big way. Nunez back to receive the kick, and he fair catches it at the 15-yard line, but a pretty good kick, 43 yards, and Colorado will take over, leading 17-0 here in the third. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, in terms of... And that's a great come out with that graphic then after that. Well, I think when we took the loss against Michigan, they kind of wrote us off in terms of the postseason honors and... Okay. 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 Nothing, 10-37 left to play in the third quarter. Coy Denver coached by his father, Sonny, was named after a couple of University of Texas players at Sonny Lake, Ernest and James Coy. And you know, people talk about Peyton Manning and Danny Werfel. Well, look how Coy Denver steps up uh, as far as numbers are concerned. And Werfel has played one more game. He's hanging right in there with the other two biggies. Well, Coy Denver is, just for this system, an outstanding quarterback. I mean, he has the inside vision. He's a competitor. He reads defenses. He rarely busts. He does what Colorado, everything they ask him to do. They, his ability is somewhat scary. He has capability. Pass for over 400 yards last week against Oklahoma State. Troutman hit from behind, but he's still able to lunge forward up to the 25-yard line. Dewey Houston, the junior, comes up with the stop. And one thing Rick Neuheisel knows is Coy Detmer is extremely talented, and he draws some comparisons with a former pupil, Troy Aikman. Well, I think when we took the loss against Michigan, they kind of wrote us off in terms of the postseason honors and, you know, national championship talk, which is all well and fine for us as a team. Uh, and and, and I, it doesn't bother Coy in the least bit. But, it, if you know, having been around a lot of good quarterbacks, Cordell Stewart, Troy Aikman, to name a couple, uh, this guy is sensational. And I think people lose sight of the fact that he has not had the stat game. You know, the game where you just build up all kinds of numbers playing against a lesser opponent. Uh, not to knock the other quarterbacks that are being mentioned in, in, in that regard, the Heisman Trophy, uh, because it's certainly not their fault who, who the schedule maker puts on there. But uh, I think if you add, for instance, a, uh, a game where Coy had a stat opportunity, uh, you'd see some uh, interesting statistics. And, but I think all of it will come out in the wash. I think I've got a great young quarterback. It's, he's fun to coach, and, I, and I'm just hopeful that he makes it through the whole season so everybody can see exactly what he can accomplish. Troutman's going to be stacked up. Steve, you know, we spent some time with uh, Coy last night. He is an exceptional young man. He's married. He has a son, Coy Jr., and he is so aware of his surroundings and all the hype around Heisman, and you can see that he is now number two all-time passing yards, trailing Cordell Stewart, but this young man is an exceptional young man. Well, you watch him on video, he just it's amazing to me how well he reads coverages. I mean, he can recognize what's happening to him, and he'll find the open man. He sees the whole field. I mean, that's, that is a real gift and a talent, especially when you have four receivers often out in their system. He's, he's going to a third and fourth man with great confidence and an assurance. Now Coy looking for the screen pass, gets it to Troutman, trying to find some running room, makes his way up to about the 40-yard line. That'll set up a third down in about two situation. Brett McGraw not fooled on the play, helped out by Ronnie Ward on the play. The dilemma that Kansas is in right now, if you put pressure on Coy Detmer, then he's going to hurt you with a big play. So they're really at a, that crossroads. All right, do we 
with a 17 nothing uh, deficit do we start taking pressure and try to create something get our hands on him and take some chances i mean that's the job michael hankowitz has got right now what do we do slow him down i think kansas needs somebody to step up and make a big play right here to get this crowd into the ball game pepper feeling of a little bit of pressure ball is tipped and it's going to be intercepted well, Ronnie Ward did step up and make a big play. His first interception of the year, the senior out of St. Louis, Missouri, who was injured all of last year. He is the leading tackler, and he was helped out by Kevin Kopp, I believe, who's the one who really got a piece of that ball that allowed Ward to come up with the interception. Ronnie Ward, the heart of this Kansas defense. Good effort by the defensive front of Kansas to collapse around him pretty quickly and get the. There, is he 53? And who's, who's got the hand up? Was it Houston? I think it was Cop. Oh, Cop. 57 got his hands up and gave, gives Kansas the ball. John, the quick pass to the outside and it is complete. Isaac Bird on the reception. The short passes again. They want to use that to try to keep the pressure off John. Now, Kansas showing a little hurry-up offense. This is something Oklahoma State did last week. And it seemed to have a little bit of a, kind of a tick in Colorado defense. They seem to be bothered by it. Henley and Sanders in the backfield. Colorado showing blitz. Here they come. Henley is going to be hogtied from behind. But still able to pick up about three on the play. And he'll be close to a first down. That is June Henley's pride and joy, his little daughter. He says he watches football games with her on tape, and even when she's watching on tape, she starts jumping up and down saying, Daddy on TV, Daddy on TV. He is extremely proud of that young lady. This is June Henley, who's foster brother. He considers him his real brother, Terry Glenn, former Ohio State wide receiver, now playing in the National Football League. So he talks to Terry all the time. Terry told him what it's like to be in the NFL, and Henley can't wait. Sanders on the carry on first down. Able to get up to about the 21-yard line. Well, June Henley's daughter, we talked about how important it is to her. Here's June Henley. She'd be at the game sometimes, and everybody be telling me after the games, that she'd be like, I want to go down there with my daddy or something like that. Or, uh, you know, after the game, she, she'd show me her shirt because she got number 20 on her back and, and the name on her back, last name. And she also don't want nobody touching her shirt or nothing like that. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of after the game, you know, see her smile and everything. Well, Matt Russell, very young lady, but Matt Russell got a hold of daddy's jersey on that time and dropped him down. No, you're not supposed to do that on TV. Never pick your nose on TV. We should tell June to tell his daughter that. Well, sets up a third down and four situation for Kansas. Ball sitting on the 21-yard line of Colorado. Once again, a golden opportunity for the Jayhawks. Three-step drop to Bird. Complete at the 10 and a first down, Kansas. Steve Rosga put on quite a hit on Isaac Bird, and the part-time outfielder in the St. Louis Cardinal organization wants to make sure he's still in Lawrence, Kansas. Isaac Bird is a tough receiver, and Matt Johnner does a good job of putting it right where he has to. He knows he's going to get hit. He had man coverage. They were putting pressure in the front seven. Good job by Isaac Bird to give uh, Kansas the ball uh, first and ten. Isaac's got a few cobwebs in the helmet. Rosga said, I asked him last night, I said, do you really like when you lower the boom on somebody? He goes, I play for every play. It doesn't make any difference, but he was talking about Tim Biakabatupa knocking his head off last, uh, last year. He said, I'd rather be the first one to get up on those plays. Henley's got some running room, tripped up at about the five-yard line. Dalton Simmons finally knocks him down, and they're going to mark it at the one. Emily, that is the first run I think he's had that he showed that explosiveness that we saw early in the year. As we said earlier, June Henley needs some room, and so watch Mark Sanders, number 34, 
make a block right there. That gives him an opportunity to get inside and have some room and space to run. Good job by June Henley and Mark Sanders. Second and goal on the one. Henley again. Touchdown, Kansas. His 12th touchdown, rushing the football, 13th overall. He is the all-time leader in that category in Kansas history, and he gets the Jayhawks right back into this football game. McCord will try to add the extra point. And it is good. With 5.01 left to play in the third quarter, June Henley helps the Jayhawks get on the board. They trail Colorado 17-7. Big Ball football will return after these local messages. touchdown of the year which moves him one short of the single season mark here at Kansas helps the Jayhawks get back into the game trailing by just 10 at 17-7 and it was set up by the interception Detmer threw only two interceptions coming into today he's tossed a couple already this afternoon and with 5-0-1 it's a 10-point Colorado lead once again the kick well deep in the end zone and Nunez is going to put it right there the touchdown once again by Kansas. Watch what puts it in. Right here, you'll see Hosea, he's going to make a block right in here. Hosea Friday, number 13, is going to open the hole. Right there he comes. He's going to make the hole happen. And June Henley comes right over the top. Good drive to take the ball, convert field position off the turnover, off the interception, and finally put it in the end zone. That's the first time they've taken advantage of an opportunity. And they needed to, especially the way Colorado looked on their opening drive here in the third quarter. Colorado with a football leading by 10. <laughs> Henry on the carry, and now the crowd of better than 45,000, just about a sellout here. Starting to get a little bit noisier. Colorado has had a lot of success against unranked teams. Their last 32 games against unranked teams, they are 30-0-2. Have not lost any. Kansas is getting a couple of votes in consideration, but have not cracked the top 25 yet, uh, at least this past week. No gain on the play, second and 10. Detmer looking for Anderson, has him at the 25, and Anderson fights his way up to the 30. Tony Blevins finally riding him down, and that will probably be a first down for Colorado. One of the things that Colorado has really taken advantage of, you're seeing Kansas most often in man coverage in the secondary. And so those inside the flankers, the inside or people in the slot, what they're doing are crossing routes, and that's really tough on a secondary back to stay with these speed receivers. And so that's why you're seeing those guys open up and are somewhat uh, three and four yards distance from a defensive player. They have a difficult task at hand. Definitely 
Nobody back to block for him. He's going down again. Let it fly. Pass is incomplete, and it looked like it may have been interference, but no call on the play, and Ray Carruth can't believe it. They both were going for the ball, the officials are saying. Colorado fans don't like it. We're going to look at it again, and you can be the judge. Here's the end of the play. Ooh. I think that's his interference. You can't. <laughs> he went through the guy going for the ball. Well, I don't know about that. Well, the other thing is whether or not it's catchable, but it definitely is interference and probably a catchable ball. I think I think you're right. You've got a guy that runs a 4-2. I think he can get to it. That's right. Detmer on the draw play, handing it off to Henry. He's able to get up to the 40-yard line. Manolito Jones out of Hannibal Moe comes up with a stop. Still short of the first down. It'll set up a third and one. Lyndon Henry is a physical back. He's 6'2", 210. Manolito Jones finds out. He runs in just like he's trying to tackle a bull. Good effort. He's a tougher runner than uh, Her Herschel Troutman, and that's why he's in the ballgame right now, trying to get something in the running game. Detmer on third and about a half a yard, able to cross the 40-yard line, and he should have the first down. It's going to be very close. He looked like he had it and then was shoved back. Well, we saw that draw play. We've also seen a number of screen passes. That is by design for this Colorado offense. That's something they really wanted to work on coming into the 1996 season. Want to be able to keep guys off balance a little bit more. Oh, they spotted that ball, Steve. I'm not sure he made it. I thought I saw his head in the football cross the 40. Rick Neuheisel looking on. No. He's got about an inch to go. Fourth and an inch. What's he going to do, Steve? Well, against the wind, he's probably going to go for it, but... Again, you've given Kansas the ball. They convert it. They prove they can score. But, of course, an offensive player and the ego of an offensive player is such, we can go get an inch. Big play, though. This is the kind of play that will turn a game completely around if you're unsuccessful. Penalty flags are flying. Brett McGraw was making a move inside. Colorado players congratulating themselves. They think they got McGraw to jump off sides. Offside. And they did. Great job by Adam Reed, though, Steve, because when he saw McGraw jump, he snapped the ball immediately. And the call was is that Colorado was not going to run the play at all. They were going to try to draw Kansas off, which is exactly what they did. Brett McGraw jumped. And as you said, Ron, Adam Reed snaps the ball. Now, Brett McGraw, the junior out of Garden City, Kansas, is a very tough competitor. It was just drawn offside. Good job by Reed, the transfer from Northwestern. So that brings up a first and ten for Colorado, and they're going to keep it on the ground with Henry. As we take a look at our Dr. Pepper roundup, brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottlers. Virginia by a couple over Temple. Boston College on top of Rutgers. Indiana giving Michigan the devil today. Penn State's pulled away from Iowa. Northwestern has grabbed the lead over Wisconsin. Vandy and Rod Donauer doing a good job against Georgia. Cincinnati a winning. And South Carolina also on top. Second and six. Detmer straight drop back. Pass is complete to Anderson. Breaks one tackle up to the 40 down to the 39-yard line. A couple of more scores to pass on over in the whack. The Horned Frogs of TCU taking on Utah tied up to seven. That's in the first. Wyoming having a great year. Tied up at Fresno State also after quarter number one. And Notre Dame Air Force, they have no score. 
Good job by Chris Anderson getting the first down and a couple to spare. That sets up first and ten. Ball on the Kansas 40-yard line. This is a Colorado offense that averages over 470 yards a game. Did not show that explosiveness in the first 30 minutes. Henry. Dancing around in the backfield, and he's going to be dropped for a loss of about two. Chris Jones from that linebacker spot, the senior out of Newton, Kansas, comes up with a stop. Still kudos to this Kansas defense, a defense that averages, allows opponents an average of over 400 yards a game, about 409 a game. Mike Hankwitz's team has done a nice job today. One of the points that he stressed is that he needed help from the offense, and they've, they've responded with a touchdown in the second half, but they need more. Jeff Regret, he's going for the home run ball, and pass is going to be incomplete, looking for Lyndon Henry out of the backfield. When you're throwing into the wind, Steve, and this is a, this is a pretty gusty wind, 20 to 30 miles an hour, how difficult is it to try to get that touch just perfect to just have that ball fall into your receiver's hand? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> you just you had a gauge strong quarterback. Yeah, you, you had but a gauge they the tell pitch. me, really good quarterbacks tell me that what makes the difference is, is the being able to to get the right kind of uh, arc on the ball and of course they're trying to judge the speed because it is swirling around the stadium and Coy has is more of a touch thrower so he's not a hard ball thrower so that gets air under the ball oftentimes and so that's why he's struggling and making the long passes complete or connect you had to judge the win on those pitches to Joe Washington 48 seconds left in the third in Colorado is going to call a timeout facing a third and 12. Let's take a look at our Nations Bank upcoming schedule. Nations Bank, proud sponsor of this Big 12 schedule. And you can see the Buffaloes, only two away games left at Missouri, at Nebraska. A favorable schedule leading up to that November 29th filled in Lincoln. And they have to find a way to beat them. Kansas, though, their schedule's pretty tough. They've got to go to Nebraska next week, and then they have to take on Dan McCartney's Iowa State Cyclone team. That is no easy task. And, of course, November the 9th, their big interstate battle with Kansas State before hosting Texas, and they wind up the season visiting Mizzou. Tough road for Glenn Mason and company. Trying to duplicate that 10-win season of last year. That is going to be difficult. And there you see Rick Neuheisel. His season is far from over despite losing to Michigan. 14 penalties in that ball game really hurt their effort to win. It was interesting talking to Rick Neuheisel last night. Bobby Bowden made a great quote one time. He said, you know, it's not, not such a big deal that you're the youngest coach in college football. It's the bigger deal and more important that at one time you become the oldest coach in college football. <laughs> Rick Neuheisel says, I've hung on that quote a long time. Colorado only two of ten on third down conversion since that opening quarter. Farouk in motion. Detmer on the screen pass. And they're not going to get much. First shell Troutman is tripped up by Manolito Jones. Good job defensively by this Jayhawk defense. Final 30 seconds of the third quarter, and I think Colorado may just try to run this clock out. They will not have to snap it again here in the third quarter unless Kansas calls a timeout. They would much rather punt with the wind to open up the fourth quarter. And Kansas is going to call a timeout. Six seconds left to play in quarter number three, and Mike Hankwitz and Glenn Mason trying to force the hand of Colorado. So it now might be in the hands of Nick Peach, the young freshman who had a great game against Texas A&M, punting the football, came in as a walk-on out of Seattle, Washington. He did a nice job in that A&M game. He was interviewed after the game. He says, hey, I'm just a soccer player. Was uh, not impressed with being a football player. Of course, you can always second guess, but I don't know that really calling a timeout to make them kick into the wind is, 
is really all that significant. What you've done is burned a timeout. Their field position is such that really, did you really need to burn it? How far is he going to punt? How much do you really gain by calling that timeout in terms of if he's kicking with the wind? What does it matter? Good strategy. It wasn't that good, they didn't use it. <laughs> but you have to wonder. I mean, even if you burn a timeout and this game is still close, you may need that extra timeout in the fourth quarter. Nevertheless, Peach is going to kick it away. Isaac Bird shaking the cobwebs out of his head after the big hit by Rosga. He is back to return it. He is standing on the 10. Anything more than a 25-yard putt would be considered a success for Nick Peach. And he gets a high spiral. Bird calling a fair catch. And he's going to get it at the 15, and a penalty flag will be thrown as they got a little bit too close to him. It may have been Ian Christian, number 96. It was 86, Brody Hefner. I think Brody lost sight of the ball. Non-contact, interference for the opportunity, catch the kick, five yards from the spot of the foul, first down. But that's the way we end the third quarter, looking at it again. The rule is you've got to get him two yards to make the fair catch, and he just touches him there with his knee, and that was the problem. That's the penalty. Three quarters are completed. Lawrence in Colorado leads the Jayhawks 17-7. Me getting in the car and leaving. I'll let Steve decide. I don't know. I thought my toss in the uh, tollway basket was pretty exceptional. Yeah. Defensive penalty. Can't end on the penalty. <laughs> Thanks. Bob, that's comforting. We know we got one more play here, boys. It's not the fourth quarter yet. Oh, that's right. They're gonna put it. They're gonna put time back on. That's funny because they walk down the other end of the field. No, that's right. They don't. Just run the play. Didn't they walk down here? I saw them all walking down. Untimed down. Yeah, exactly. That's a, that's a great call. We had a penalty on the last play of the third quarter. We will play one untimed down, then we will have the end of the quarter. Folks, the graphics is, is right. We're still in the third quarter. Penalty on the last play of the third quarter. Everybody started walking down the end of the field, and they said, wait a minute, we can't end it on a penalty. we got to have one more play, so this will be an untimed down. But I guarantee this will be the last play of the third quarter unless there is another penalty. First and ten for the Jayhawks. Ball on the 20. Three-step drop, a quick pass, batted away, but it is complete. <laughs> June Henley comes up with it, but I think it was Greg Jones who tipped the football and went right into the hands of Henley. Interesting way to end the quarter. Watch number 59 right there, June Henley, or excuse me, Greg Jones. How this ball, and then June Henley it? has the forethought to find the ball. I mean, just what a gift. He was blocking on the pass play, 
and Greg Jones knocked it up, and June Henley is there. Got some great presence by June Henley to make the reception, but that does end the third quarter. So we still have 15 minutes left to be played here at Lawrence, Kansas on a homecoming Saturday, a beautiful day, and there is Steve Rosga, the hard-hitting free state safety out of Roseville, Michigan. Talking to him last night about how he likes to hit guys hard, but he says that doesn't matter. It matters being the first one to get up from that hit. I think about it a little bit. I just, I just live for, for every single play. Actually, I mean, I, I've really developed a new attitude with this year. Uh, I, I laugh when I'm out there. I smile more. I'm just having more, more fun. And, and you know, of course, it helps when I, when I hit somebody rather than them hitting me. Uh, it feels a lot better, you know, because then I get up first. You know, because uh, my, my first year starting, there were a couple guys I hit that would help me up. And that's not the best feeling in the world, because you think you hit them real hard. I know Tim Biakabatuka, I, I hit him, I, I could have sworn I hit him as hard as I could. And he helped me up, and my helmet was off to the side of my face. And, and it's just, it's things like that, that, that now I can appreciate them now that I've gotten bigger and gotten stronger, and it's my senior year. And they're going to need him here in quarter number four. Henley breaks around the left side, picks up the first down, and three plus. Brian Nooner has been roaming the sidelines all afternoon. Let's check in with him for an injury update. Brian? Well, Kansas linebacker Jason Thorne on that last defensive series banged up his right knee. He's on the sideline. He's got ice on it. The uh, report is that it's just uh, a little soreness, and he should return. But right now, he's hoping his offense is going to stay on the field for a while. And I think Glenn Mason's hoping the offense stays on the field for a while. Matt Johnner still the quarterback. Ben Roos did see some playing time in that first half, but it has been all Johnner here in quarter number three. Bird to the left, Gordon to the right. Johnner looking for Bird and is almost picked off, and it is intercepted. Dalton Simmons with the interception, and he has a lot of room to run. And Gordon is finally going to stack him up at about the 26-yard line. Dalton Simmons, who injured his knee in the bowl game of 1995, didn't play last year, came back this year after that torn ACL, and he gets his first interception. Dalton Simmons will get the ball. The wind has played havoc on the ball. It gets held up, and there Steve Rosga tips the ball away, and then Dalton Simmons is able to make the interception. But the wind really is tough on the quarterback today when they're going into that wind. And then watch the tackle right there. Wow. John Gordon makes the tackle, makes Dalton Simmons pay for it. Rosga did a great tip, and that is a drill you see even high school football teams working on, a tip drill. Work to perfection. Colorado, good field position. Detmer is pressured, and he is going to be dropped. Ron Warner coming in from that linebacker spot for his first sack of the year. That's something this Kansas defense hasn't done a lot of this season. Several times today, Rod Warner has put pressure, good pressure on Coy Detmer. This time he's able to wrap him up. Good pressure from both the outside, and they collapse the pocket around him and put him to the turf. Loss of six on the play, sets up a second and 16. Detmer's pass is incomplete. Intended for Ryan Nunez. Nunez, a true freshman out of Austin, Texas. The 5'9", 170-pound receiver was a tailback in high school, set all sorts of Russian records running the football down in Texas, originally committed to UT, changed his mind, and that took a lot of courage when you live in Austin to say, yeah, coach, I'm going to go there and then turn around and go to Colorado. Third and a bunch for the Buffaloes. Detmer, complete up to the 25-yard line. No, he dropped it. Detmer looked like he had it in his hand, couldn't complete the grab. Lost the football, and Colorado now with a fourth and 16. Jason Leslie's going to attempt the field goal. They're going to spot the ball at the 39-yard line. This will be a 49-yard attempt. His career best was 48. Oh, 
The holder is Rosgill. And it's a fake. Rosgill runs the action. Still running, has some room, and he's not going to be near the first down. Good job by Kansas for a moment. It looked like he might break through, but Ronnie Ward would not allow Steve Rouse to run the option towards the first down. Good call of trying to take advantage of an opportunity. Rouse can run the option play. He comes right down. He almost makes makes the first and ten for Colorado. But what the key is is they knew they were going to be able to either kick the field goal or pin, at least pin Kansas down deep, and that's what they wanted them to do. Also, they know that Kansas has got to go a long way against the win. And offensively, they've not consistently been able to do it. So take the chance. Good call. And yeah, because this win is playing a factor, we saw that in the last offensive set by Kansas. You know, back in 1992, these two teams played right here in Lawrence. If I remember correctly, Colorado trailed Kansas about 18-17, two minutes left. James Thrill Hill got the touchdown to give Colorado the 25-17 win. Not that close today. Henley breaks a couple of tackles, skips outside. Up to the 38-yard line for Jude Henley. Pick up a 15 on the play before Steve Rosger wrapped him up. Now, Rosga looked like he missed him the first time, came back and got him a second time. Watch Isaac Bird, number one, throw a block for June Henley that puts him in a position to make the run more significant, more impactful against Colorado. Isaac Bird's going to, right there, just that little frame of being able to ward him off. Ball is loose on the carpet, bobbled around, and I think that uh, Kansas did retain possession. Ron, one of the things that the Kansas coaches talked about is that Kansas struggled early in the season where they've been pressing too much, trying to trying to force opportunities and make things happen, and they've made mistakes. And Pat Rule right there on the le on the on the left, you know, he's the offensive coordinator, and you know, he, I think he can look and say this team has not pressed today. They've really, you know, been able to be patient, and take what the uh, defense has allowed them. They've not been able to get it in the end zone as consistently as they want, but they played much better. Second and 16, no room for Henley. In fact, he's going to lose three on the play. And the Boo Birds are out. Merkerson on the stop, the junior out of Las Vegas, Nevada. One of those tenacious linebackers in this Colorado defense. This front seven of Colorado is extremely tough to run against, especially inside. June Henley needs to get outside if he can. It's just tough sledding inside when you've got guys like Olsen and Mau Mau and Ziegler and Jones. That is just a very formidable front four. Well, they didn't want a confrontation with Mau Mau, but he's done a nice job, although it has been quiet. Johnner going upstairs down the middle, and there's no one there. Bird trying to catch up with the ball, but it was thrown well ahead of him. Rosga on the coverage. They haven't been able to get the ball to Bird as much as they wanted to today. They, he's a big play man, throwing against the wind. Again, Colorado Rosga is right where he needs to be, and the ball is just tough to complete a pass on the long ball when you're throwing against such a strong wind in your face. Dean Rawls set to kick it away, standing at the 17-yard line, into the wind. Pretty good-looking kick. Fair catch is called, and Colorado will begin first and ten from the 27-yard line. A 43-yard kick into the wind. Good job by Dean Royal, but Kansas still finds themselves on the short end of a 17-7 score. They only have 99 total yards in this game after three quarters. And they, I wonder how many they got there. Do they have it down there in their computer? 
They have 124 yards. Heisman Trophy candidate Byron hands part of it. He's got more than half. I'm going to do this, Steve, to update how we, you know, Henley can't beat him alone. He's got half their yards. You know how we talked about it again. Look at that skull and crossbones. week, a crucial South Division Big 12 encounter as Brandon Stewart, Albert Connell, and the Texas A&M Aggies team up against Heisman Trophy candidate Byron Hanspard of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Hanspard is the nation's leading rusher, averaging almost 218 yards per game. Catch the action from Kyle Field in College Station next Saturday morning. Hanspard, one of the great runners in the Big 12. Here is another one, June Henley. He has half of Kansas's total yards on offense. Henley responsible for 73 yards. Kansas only with 124 yards total offense so far this game. Troutman dancing around is going to be dropped. And Steve, you talked at the top of the show that June Henley cannot win this game by himself. Either can Matt Johnner. He needs some help, but right now the two of them aren't getting much help. Well, you don't want to fault all of Kansas State, uh, Kansas offense. Part of the problem is, is this really talented Colorado defense. I mean, they are extremely difficult to run against, that seven-man front. And then again, the quarterback, quarterbacks in the game have not been able to complete the passes in terms of making big plays out of the passing game. So June Henley's had to carry a bigger part of the load than the coaches wanted him to carry. Colorado second and 10, 10.45 left to play in the ball game. They're holding on to that 17-7 lead. Detler's pass is complete. Boy, you could have hung some clothes on that rope. <laughs> Good-looking pass to Ray Carruth. I don't see how he got it in between those defenders, Steve. Well, the defensive back loses where he is on the field because he's, he's got a chance. He's got to turn around. If you're going to play pass defense, Jason Harris has got to turn around and know where the ball is. Jamie Harris was also there, but you've got to be able to know where the ball is, and the receiver just found the open area, and Coy Detmer found the receiver. Garuth, the senior out of Sacramento, California, fastest receiver on this team. First and 10 for the Bucks. Kansas showing a six-man front, trying to shake things up. Herschel Troutman goes to the outside. Crosses the 45 up to about the 46-yard line before Ronnie Ward rides him out of bounds. Let's take a look at the Southwest Airlines storyline. Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. Well, Colorado scored on the first possession of both halves. And look at the total yardage. Kansas has not been able to generate the kind of offense uh, to close the gap on the score. And Kansas starts three drives inside Colorado territory and yet only net seven points. That was part of the problem in the first half, too. And that's to the credit of Colorado's defense, more to the ineffectiveness of the Kansas offense. On second and six, Troutman, big hole, and he was one tackle away from breaking that all the way. Maurice Gaddy from that strong safety spot tripped him up, but Herschel Troutman saw the golden go post. Watch the offensive line seal off the opportunity and then Herschel Troutman being able to cut back. He makes that little stagger step and gets back against the grain. His role model is Barry Sanders, and that's his Barry, it's his Barry Sanders imitation. Whose is it? Yeah, well. <laughs> I think every running back Byron Hanspart says the same thing to me. So did Troy Davis. First and ten for the Buffs. And we have a whistle. It'll be too much time. History would dictate Colorado, despite only having a ten-point advantage with a lot of time left. In a pretty good position to win this football game. In their last 86 games, they have lost only two games in which they have led at the end of three quarters of play. Glenn Mason looking for somebody to step up and make another big play. Coming into the game, Colorado's offense, they, they really started off kind of slowly, and you 
look at the different talent, in, different individuals on the team started slowly, but boy, they, the coaches started stressing details, execution, creating momentum, and they, they're starting to play much better as an offensive football team, and they've played well today. They've had a couple of miscues, but they've managed this game, and they've been in control most of the way. Detmer passes complete to Phil Zavoy, and he dropped it. It was in his hands, and he couldn't wrap it up. Tony Blevins on the coverage, but I think Detmer may have put that right where it was supposed to be. Watch him. He's going to run a post route inside. Tony Blevins is going to pick him up. Also, there is Jamie Harris on him. Boy, I think he might have seen the sense oh. of the hit, the opportunity that was coming at him there in terms of Tony Blevins. I think he saw that Scud missile coming right at his head. Bill Savoy had a couple of drops last week against Oklahoma State that should have been caught. The coaches were concerned about that. A little sprint draw play, but Adrian Green is there to stop the play. Well, you know, we talked about the Colorado receivers and how a talented bunch they are coming into the game. And so far this afternoon, this is what they have done. Caruth, the leading receiver, with six. Kid and Savoy only with one catch each. A lot of Caruth's catches have been those really unique plays where he's coming across the middle. He's had a lot of a cr coming across crossing type routes. He's caught him in traffic all day long. Third and 14. Anderson on the near side. Detmer right down the middle. Pass is incomplete and intercepted. That is Detmer's third interception of the day. He had only thrown two coming into the game, and Tony Blevins picks off his second. Colorado's trying again, throwing to Caruth. He's the inside man on a two uh, wide receivers out. He tips the ball, can't put it away. Tony Blevins is playing free safety in, in really center field. And the ball gets airborne, the tip drill, and Tony Blevins is right where he needs to be to pick it off. Still a lot of time left. 8.22, Henley on the top. Made some room and kept going. That was pure effort by June Henley. And that will be good for a first down. He may have gotten three on that play. He turned it into a 10-yard pickup before Rosga Tried to get him out, just arm tackled him. Henley blew right through it. He gets a, on the left side, he gets a good block on Fred, Dave, uh, thir Fred Jones, number 13. They block him, and that gives him the seam that he needs to get outside. And then he almost, bad, poor tackling, he almost walks the tightrope right down the sideline. That's first and 10, no room in the middle. Well, with eight minutes left to play in the ball game, you have to start thinking, Steve, how much this clock is going to work against this Kansas offense. Do they need some type of quick strike right now? Well, they've not been able to show that they can throw the ball down the field, so they're going to have to hurry it up, regardless of what they're doing. Trying to get something to do trying to get downfield right now. Matt Johnner. Johnner keeps it, heads around the left side, and he is going to be tripped up. That'll bring up a third down in about three situation. Kansas has just not been able to throw the ball down the field with any kind of effectiveness. They've not been able to get the ball into Bird's hands as much as they wanted to, so that's been two of the problems today. And now in the fourth quarter, they're going against a strong win. They need a big play. Third down, three yards to go. That's a big third down play for Kansas, trying to keep this drive alive. They keep it on the ground, and Henley is stood up by Matt Russell. Oh, here, here. Henley. oh you can hear the pads pop up here. Russell lowered the boom on Henley. Russell from that... Russell from that middle linebacker spot on third down and three. Did not allow Henley a whole lot. May have picked up a yard on the play. This is a tough place to, to get any yardage inside the tackles. 
of that Colorado defense. They've been tough all day, and then on third down, a critical third down, that's where they try to go to get it. Fourth down and two, three tight ends shown by Kansas. And we have a timeout, I think, Colorado. They were having some substitution problems. May not have had enough players on the field. So Matt Russell and company will take a break. Facing fourth down and two, 6.45 left to play in the game. We'll be back after a word from Sonic Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. Six minutes and 45 seconds left to be played in the ball game. Troy Detmer sitting on the side with Ray Carruth watching the defense try to stop Kansas on a fourth down and two. Gordon in motion. Johnner has some pressure out in the flat. It is going to be incomplete. Ryan Black, the junior out of Phoenix, Arizona, on the coverage, and Colorado is going to take over. That is disappointing for Glenn Mason. And he wants to talk to Pat Rule about it. Trying to get blood and area of the field. Pick play is what it is. Illegal. Show it again. Can we show it again? Little pick and roll play. We're going to rack it up, Steve. See, you ask us, we'll do it. No problem. Take a look at it from a different angle this time. You'll watch... Let's see, who is it? Henley, June Henley is going to make go make a block. Still didn't get Gordon open. Troutman slashes over the 35 down to the 30-yard line, and Colorado with a first and 10. Ronnie Ward on the stop. Maybe this time. Watch June Henley. He's going to go in here, and he's going to make it almost like he's, he's not trying to make a block. He's acting like he's a receiver, but actually, this is a pick play, and this is not... They're trying to make him, watch June Henley, that's, see, that's a pick play. Pick and they roll. make him look like he's trying to catch the ball, but he's not the receiver. Anytime you're sticking your backside out like that, you're <laughs> really not trying to catch the ball. You don't have a that's prayer on that one. <laughs> and now Colorado has the luxury of being inside of Kansas territory. Troutman cuts back against the defense, gets into the secondary again, and another first down for Herschel Troutman. Tony Blevins coming up from that safety spot. They're wrestling down along with Michael Allen. Troutman doing the job running the football now. Herschel Troutman's an exciting runner to, to watch play. I mean, he's got a low center of gravity. He's not real tall. And he just turns those feet and, fi feet and finds the open area. One thing about the pick play in terms of we see it a lot in college football, and, and a lot of times it's not picked up, and sometimes there's a gray area of whether or not it, it, he actually is an intended receiver, and he's trying to just, he just gets in the way of the defensive back, so I give, I want to make sure that point's paid. That's exactly right. Well, we saw Trotman having 77 yards. Well, 20-plus of those have come on the last two carries prior to that carry. He reminds a lot of people of Eric Bieniemy, the former Colorado running back, as far as style and also size. 
And the coach is telling us this is a runner that does everything well. He pass blocks well, he runs the football well, and he catches well. Definitely a triple threat. Yeah, they really describe him as a complete player. I mean, he has the cutback ability. He's not always pretty, but he's exceptionally quick and very talented and durable and physical. He doesn't bust plays is the other asset that he has that he brings to the Colorado offense. Now the fans beginning to file out on this homecoming Saturday as we are inside of five minutes and Colorado knocking on Kansas's door again. Detmer lops it up into the end zone. It's going to be knocked away incomplete. James Kidd, the intended receiver. Chris Anderson also in the uh, end zone. Well, pound for pound, James Kidd is the toughest receiver on this Colorado team. And this is one of the few times that you see Coy Detmer ever throw into really a pretty well covered area of the field right there Jamie Harris is there there are two defenders in the area maybe trying to force the ball just a little bit to make a play Ray Groot very successful on the first reception he's had each year each one has been a touchdown from his freshman to his senior season third and eight for the Buffaloes Detmer with some time lost it again in the end zone a lot of pushing and shoving Pass ball is incomplete. Detmer wants the interference call. Ray Carruth, the intended receiver. That may have been offensive interference of anything. That was my impression. Let's see if Ray Carruth is not giving a little shove to the defensive back of Kansas to get some distance. Well, he gets a little shove there. Well, he runs into the back of him, so I don't know that he was actually trying. Let's look at it from this angle. He gets a little bit of a shove there. Uh, that was okay. Good call. Jason Leslie will attempt a field goal. It'll be a 32-yarder from the right hash. The kick. It's good. So Colorado takes advantage of being inside of Kansas territory. The Leslie field goal makes it a 27 lead for the Buffaloes. And Big 12 football will return after these local messages. He's done everything he's can, but he's losing. I don't know. Dude, I don't know, Steve. Who do you think? Um, he does? Well, I don't know. I'm trying to go down the line here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't. Nothing just jumps I out of me. I think that's a pick 'em call. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 135 yards. Colorado four minutes and 42 seconds away from securing the victory. They lead it 20 to 7 here in the fourth quarter. Now let's take a look at our Sonic play of the game. Today's play of the game is brought to you by Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And our play of the game, courtesy of that Buffalo offense. It wasn't through the air, it was on the ground. And it was Mr. Ray Carruth. Good look in reverse. This was able to go for 29 yards, part of... Carruth, 135 yards total offense this afternoon. And that is our Sonic play of the game. He's had a nice steady game, Ray Carruth. And they've really asked him to make some, some tough assignments. Anytime you're in the slot with two wide receivers and asked to come across the middle a lot, Kansas tried to man up on all these Colorado receivers. They went man most of the day. I saw a little bit of, I think I saw some zone, but mostly man coverage. 
and uh, he was open quite a bit in terms of being able to come across the middle, but he paid for it several times. Not too bad company to be in with Michael Westbrook and Charles Johnson. Lovely. Ray we'll Carruth right off. in the mix at number three. Leslie set to kick it away. And he puts a bullet right through the upright. Kansas will begin first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. And this has been a Kansas team that's had some opportunities today. In that first half, they did not take advantage of them. And that has really jumped up to bite Pat Rule and the offensive team here for Kansas. This was a high powered offense averaging over 39 points a game. This Colorado defense, you have to give them a lot of credit. A.J. Kristoff's squad has really done a nice job running around and knocking people around. John are still in at quarterback. And the south foul goes over the middle and is complete. Eric Van, normally a tailback, comes up with a reception. The junior out of El Dorado, Kansas. He is another one of those dangerous players on this Kansas offense. 15 yards to the 35. First down for Kansas. Johnner, good protection, pulls it down. Now he scrambles. A little bit of an opening, able to pick up five on the play before he is stacked up by a bunch of white and black jerseys. By number 36, the coverage of today's game has been produced by Robert Steinfeld. Kenny Miller, once again, our director. Technical director, Richard Harlan. Associate director, Tom Stoner. Associate producer, Eric Josephson. Some of the people that are responsible for putting these on each and every Saturday. Again. Henley keeps the legs moving and grinding, trying to get up to the first down, but Steve Rosga is not going to have anything to do with that. Number 15, Rosga. Our production operations, Tammy Ripley and Judy Jackson down in Houston. Our director of production is Kevin Landy and the executive producer of today's game, Patrick McClanahan. Third down and three, 333 left to play. Jotter, difficult roll, but he's able to complete the pass. Isaac Bird comes up with a reception, good for a first down. Ryan Black was putting some pressure on Jotter. Now Kansas trying to hurry things up. When the quarterback's been able to move around to get away from pressure and, and stand tall and throw the ball, get set, they've been successful. Isaac Bird, that's a, they've just not been able to do it consistently enough all day. Yeah, we had some Kansas guys jumping around and also some Colorado guys jumping around. Let's see if the defense threw the offense off. That's what the Kansas players are saying. Dead ball, false start, offense. But that's not what the guys in stripes are saying. Well, the Memorial Stadium crowd of almost 50,000, almost a sellout. A lot of them have already left. It was a homecoming day. Didn't get a whole lot of chances to wave the wheat today. This is when Kansas scores. Everybody stands up, starts moving the hands. Kansas team plays the second toughest schedule in the NCAA, according to one preseason poll. Pass is complete. This time to John Gordon. Well, this stadium was designed after the stadium at Princeton. Bog Allen went and took a look at it and said, that's the kind of stadium I want here in Lawrence. It is the seventh oldest stadium in college football with Georgia Tech's Bobby Dodd Stadium number one. We saw John Gordon make that uh, last reception. Here is a freshman out of Florida who originally said he wanted to play for Howard Schnellenberger at Oklahoma. And then when Howard left, he said, nope, going to Kansas. John has got a scramble and he is gonna be dumped hard. Aaron Marshall, the sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois with his first sack of, their, of the day and second of the year. And Kansas is going to call a timeout. 2.50 left to play in a ball game. Kansas trails by 13. And we'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper. And it's 85 Dr. Pepper bottlers. Happy to bring you this inaugural season of Big 12 football. Well, they, yeah, they never took advantage of the 
suspect corners in Colorado. They've been, they either threw short stuff that they couldn't, uh, you know, they were going to get anyway. They never went across the middle. Like you said last week against the, in the a &M game, Colorado has managed this football game. Yeah, that's what I wrote down. They've had field position. Yep. They haven't controlled the ball. They haven't been able to, but they've had breaks in the kicking game. Yeah, because they, they wanted to match up Bird with the cornerbacks, and they really never did. How many yards handling that? Here is the score. Well, they haven't stopped cheering here in Lawrence, despite the fact that Steve trails by 13. Two minutes and 50 seconds left to play in the ball game. Next week, Kansas, of course, heads to Nebraska. And they will have their hands full with that Nebraska defense. Charlie McBride's done a great job with that Cornhusker D. John on second and 18 is going to be dropped for about a four-yard loss. Terrell Cade from that left end position coming up to make the stop. Next week, the Buffaloes at home to host John McAvick and the Longhorns. That should be a dandy. Third and 22, pressure coming. John are going upstairs for Bird off his fingertips. For once, the ball didn't float down, Steve. It just what? kept going. Isaac Bird has done everything he can to contribute to Kansas today. He's done his job. He'll be working on Torrey Davis, number four. Get inside where he's got to be. And, and again, the ball's just a little bit overthrown, but the wind is swirling around. That's been a problem for both quarterbacks when they've gone against the wind. Trying to throw the long ball, it's just a very difficult read in terms of how much velocity, how much speed to put on the pass. That's what Kansas wanted to do. They wanted to test those corners with Isaac Bird. That's one of the few opportunities they've had. Jonner's pass is complete to Eric Van. Quite a collision down at about the 24-yard line. And it's going to be short of the first down. Where they placed it, it'll probably be about two or three inches short. Depends where those chains are finally put down. Looking at it again. Right across the middle, a tough place to make a living <laughs> or earn a scholarship. Good job by uh, Ryan Black. Puts a big hit on Eric Van, number 25. Not long enough. And Colorado will take over as Kansas comes up just a couple of inches short. So now Glenn Mason has to turn his thoughts toward playing up in Lincoln next week. Well, the storyline coming to the ballgame, both teams have been somewhat inconsistent. Colorado is gaining a little more consistency. They've been able to just manage this football game. They've been the more consistent team, both on offense and defense. Kansas has had their opportunities. They just could not put it in the end zone, and that's the credit, really, to the Colorado defense. They've played feisty football today. Now Rick Neuheisel knows that he's on track for that November 29th game. Still a lot of football left. But I'm sure the Colorado fans are now really pointing toward that. But they've got to find a way to beat Nebraska. This Colorado team hasn't beaten them since 1990. Of course, last year they lost at home to uh, Nebraska, 44-21. John Hessler is coming at quarterback for Coy Detmer. Hessler, who took over last year when Detmer was injured with that ACL and done did just a spectacular job. Honorable mention, all big eight. The junior out of Brighton, Colorado. He has got to be the most patient man in all of college football. He says he still looks at game films all the time, still prepares just like he was starting, just in case, because he never knows when he's going to get the call again. Well, he was definitely the surprise of the year last year at Colorado. I mean, he played very big. He was an option quarterback in high school, and that, he's a role player this year, but uh, he's certainly uh, more than adequate in the backup role to Coy Detmer. I think there's little doubt that uh, he might be the best backup quarterback in college football right now. Third down and five, we're inside of a minute. Taking their time, and they have whistle, and they took a little bit too much time. But they probably have to run only one play more play. Game. This All may be the last that. play of the game.
Rick Neuheisel able to keep everything in perspective this year. He has taken some criticism in the Denver papers about being soft, about the way his coaching style is, and it's not what we've seen in the past, but it works for Rick Neuheisel, and that's what, what is important. And he understands the criticism. He accepts it. He had a great line. He said his dad used to tell him, his dad's an attorney, so he used to tell him, the higher you get on the ladder, the bigger your behind is exposed. And guys are going to take shots at you. You just have to accept it. On third and ten, Keith Miller, the ball carrier, his first carry of the year. And Kansas is going to burn a timeout, facing the fourth and five for Colorado. You know, when you talk about Rick Neuheisel, I mean, he really is a, an exciting coach to play for. It'd be a lot of fun to play for. He approaches things a little differently, but I, I played for Barry Switzer, and he, <laughs> he wasn't a legend in 1973, yeah. but he was becoming legendary. Rick does it his way, and he's a player-type coach, and he has fun. Now let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper player of the game. Today's player of the game is the Colorado defense, and it's brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Kansas only able to manage thus far 186 yards total offense. And this is a team that has been explosive in games past. And the Colorado D has stood up to the challenge and done a nice job. They are Dr. Pepper players of the game. Matt Russell, part of that defense. Good look at haircut. He actually gives haircuts too to other team members, and team members give his him his haircuts. And they will not touch mine, nor yours. Peach back to kick it away. Kansas coming with everybody, and they get a piece of it. But it's going to get a great roll. Nobody's there to receive it. And with 25 seconds left, it is going to be down at the 28-yard line, but we do have a penalty flag thrown. Michael Chandler, a reserve wide receiver, the freshman out of Kansas City, Kansas, with a block. Illegal formation against the kicking team. Well, now, if you're Kansas, do you just decline it? Because if you force them to punt again, you may not get this one. They got, I think they were called for this in the first, in the first half of the ball game. They've got to have seven men on the line and four in the backfield. How did he miss that ball, though? I'm surprised that wasn't blocked a little bit better. Well, let's see how we can... He comes right up the gut. Well, Pete still got it off. And they are going to replay the fourth down. So now with 22 seconds left, Rick Neuheisel in the middle of that huddle with his team talking about this uh, special teams. And we have a timeout. Rick Neuheisel has a law degree. He was able to do it even though he was playing a little professional football on the side. A member of two different bar associations. Said he was going to join his dad's law firm, Neuheisel and Neuheisel. And he said, I would have been Neuheisel. He is a charismatic young coach. I say I, I enjoyed talking to him last night. Anybody that admits he's a Jimmy Buffett parrot head, it's all right in my book. <laughs> Takes his players tubing down the river that runs behind the Colorado practice field, took the freshman down it. He says that at the beginning of this year, football wasn't that much fun. It was losing some of the, the glow that he likes to have, but it's back to being fun again for him. Fourth and ten, Pete back to kick it away again. Everybody on the line this time, they drop two off, and Pete just hits a line drive. Into the win, and this is going to pad his stats because it may go all the way into the end zone, and it does. A 76-yard kick. by Nick Peets, the freshman out of Seattle, Washington, who walked onto this program, took over for Andy Mitchell, and that is the best of his career, his young career. 